it's, it's getting crazy out here. Whether it ain't tea or ain't tea. Mm. Oh, that's the wrong name. Damn it. Damn it. I don't know. Say you muted. I don't even know why that one is here. Yeah, because that one literally doesn't even work anymore. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> welcome back. Oh, there he is. There's my guy, Dre Visuals. Dre Visuals. Hey, happy birthday, man. Dre, my man. Um, welcome back to another episode of the Let's Keep It A Buck podcast. The only podcast in which we do things differently every single stream. Here we go. Uh, I got the guys here with me. A little mixed up. A little mixed up. Okay. Well, I got the guys here with me. Um, Daddy Damo. Say, say what's up to the people, man. How you doing? Um, I'm doing great. It's a cool day. Calm little day. Smooth little day. Shit was cool. Okay. Oh, smooth and cool? Smooth and cool. Oh, Diddy. man. Like a... A Paul Mall cigar, red. Um, Daddy Sage, how you doing today? No, no, Diddy again. Uh, I'm, I'm actually was having a fantastic day to be honest, but I don't know what the fuck I ate. I, I am a ticking time bomb. If I take my leave, I apologize. But I don't know what the fuck I ate, bro. I feel like shit right now. But um, outside that, I was having a fantastic day. Let's get to it. Um, Daddy B Souls, how you doing today? I'm doing good, man. Energy up. Back on the number one basketball podcast on YouTube without an NBA player. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Wait, what? Number one basketball platform without an NBA player. And that's yeah. factual. There's nothing. There's it's not a singular lie. My favorite one at the very least, you know? Yeah. Huh. Um, listen, man, if you're new to this and you want to be true to this, make sure you hit that join button. Make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Make sure you tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend. We've got some big things coming for the audio people. So point them in the direction of Spotify. Have them go follow us on Spot. Even if you don't listen over there, right? Just follow us on Spotify. Really? Like, it's any audio platform, but, you know, Spotify is yeah. cool. Spotify is probably the best if you had to choose one. Apple Music is great. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, Apple I am Music. about to read some five-star reviews. Well, just uh, let's read uh, Spotify star review. Spotify star reviews. Mm. Well, they you, you can't do that on Spotify, but you can on Apple Podcast. Uh, <laughs> this is from D Dog, five star review. Great podcast. Only podcast I can actually watch these days. Great for sports stocks and plenty of laughs. Okay, this is from Zeke. Funniest content creators on YouTube and what is? I can't finish it. And P something. I've genuinely never heard a funnier group of guys than y'all. Y'all be making Mondays and Thursdays be the best day for real. Let's keep it a buck for L. Mm. And uh, last one from Kenny Omo 97 I've been watching these guys since 2021. I love these guys. I'm unhappy mother bucker. Mother bucker. Love it. Crazy. And a lot more. But yeah. uh, if you are here to claim those, remember we have some league past vip things to give away i want to give you guys the uh i want to give that to you if you leave a five-star review we will be giving out something special to you <sighs> um what else we got yeah tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend remember there's always many ways to support us this that the third there was one that i just forgot about it really just escaped my mind somebody said it in the chat but it's okay instagram tiktok instagram memberships. Hold on now. Let's talk about it. What Trinidad James say on Instagram straight flexing? Um, I'm probably going to do uh, what the kids call an Instagram takeover soon. Huh? You know, um, you know, I'll just have my day on there. That was crazy, right? <laughs> I ain't never heard a kid say that. But... I was saying, what kids are saying that one? <laughs> Instagram takeover. We're about to get the, make the Instagram great again. Doing an Instagram takeover. Gonna, mm. gonna be on the stories. Make a post, an in feed or whatever. Just answering some cues. I've got some A's for you guys. Make sure you follow us over on Instagram. And hold on, this is my Twitter now. Hold on, hold on, hold on. It might be something we shouldn't be seeing. Let me switch real quick. Uh, and follow us on Twitter as well for all the updates. The official Twitter page for Let's Keep It a Buck podcast, LKIAB pod on, on Twitter. 
and LKIAB underscore pod on Instagram. We're taking over socials. I'm doing a social media takeover, right? That's what the kids say. I keep saying that, right? Stop, bro. <laughs> what do you mean, stop? <laughs> You're offering the kids too much, man. Damn. Tell me what's on y'all's minds. Before we get started, we never we never asked. Easter's coming up. What y'all got planned? What's, what y'all... Easter egg hunts for the kids, Damo? Or do you believe in that? Uh, Mashallah type shit. Yeah. <laughs> Mashallah is crazy. Uh, yeah, we're doing an Easter egg hunt ordeal for her again. Uh, that should be fun. Probably going to take some more pictures. Oh, and then we... uh, yeah, we did it last year. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. So we're gonna, most likely going to do that. Now, me personally... I don't give a fuck about that shit. I, I don't. I don't get it. We hunt for eggs for Jesus. I don't know. Jesus is a bunny. Like I don't get it. I don't know what we're doing. Uh, my girl's going on a work trip on Sunday, so twelve hour stream. Woo oh, woo! Yeah, that's what we doing. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. So um, due to due to some health complications, uh, we taking it easy this Easter. We usually go up. To certain relatives' house, but a lot of, a lot of people just get recovering. A lot of surgeries, so we taking it easy this Easter. Uh, fam might go to the church. That's about it, though. Okay, okay. Fam might go to the church, but you not going to the church, right? You not with that? No, I, I might, I might go as well. I just, I don't. The only thing I say, Easter traffic. Oh. <laughs> not, not not a fan of it. I ain't gonna lie. I ain't not if there's a true test, it's traffic and like that. That ooh, ugh. I don't know. That's a game time decision. I'll be honest. That's no, a game time decision. True, true test um for a testimony. <laughs> what are you what are you Can doing, I, Omar? Someone oh, what you He's the same oh, word yeah. traffic. Here oh, y'all okay. go, bro. Um my fault, no, Messiah's. Jesus. I'm probably not doing nothing. I'll probably go to uh this old family church of mine. Um, but that's just because, you know, it's tradition, I guess. But it, you know, you know, I might go to that. But other than that, I'm gonna be sleep. I'm gonna be sleep, man. I'm a hard working man. <laughs> Two days really mean something. I'm sleeping, you know. It is what it is. I'll be acting like I work hard at lunch. I mean at work. Yeah, I'll be no, no, I don't work too hard at lunch or work. The really? the fans say they missed the old Meezy streams. To that, you say what? <gasps> oh well, come through early, stay late, uh, catch me on the weekends. Actually, this Saturday I do have an event. It's, it's streaming on YouTube 8 p.m. Um, it is the debate stream. It is a stream of them all on YouTube. If you've got any video that I've made this week or month or whatever, and you have a complaint about it or anything to say about it. You want to battle the minds, mm. all those things come through. We'll be going into some more topics heavier. We'll be debating people, all that stuff like that. No, it's going to be a great time. 8 p.m. on my YouTube channel specifically. Yeah. Can I ask y'all real quick, um, Omar and Sage specifically, because y'all both brought it up. Um, what kind of church people are y'all? Like when y'all go to the church, what kind of church goer are you? So I, I, I've, um, so what, what do you mean? So like. How I behave, or like what church I? Yeah, behave. how you? I, no, not what church you're in. Jesus, no. Well, like, how, how, how do you behave in church? When do you wear jeans? Let's start there. What, what are you wearing in church? That's for the important. most part. For the most part, I, I I'm not always, uh, you know, like I, I'll say this. I push the I push the envelope a lot sometimes in terms of like that. But nah, I haven't worn jeans in a while. But then again, I'm not gonna act like I go to church every Sunday. So, right. yeah. So I'm just being honest. Hey, hey, look. I I know there's the there's the Monday Night Messiahs in this comment section. I, it is what it is, dog. You got me. But um, uh, I I I believe in Jesus. I still pray some all that other stuff. But um, I I mean I don't go to church every time. Sage being yeah. around the bush. Look. Being said, uh, in terms of how I behave, I ain't gonna lie. I'll bob my head at a couple songs. But to be honest. I'm a bigger fan of the testimony of the pastor's word or whatever. I don't really. The song's cool. I, I ain't gonna lie. I know that's probably a scorcher. I'm cool with the songs. I'd rather just have a pastor talk, get get the message across, inspire me, all the other stuff, and then get on if it were ideal for me. But I know some of y'all like to sing songs and stuff. So. I live in Georgia. I'm wearing polos and chinos to church. Not wearing a three-piece suit. It's not happening. Trust me. It's I can't make it. 
I can't make it from the, the parking lot to the door sweating in a suit. It's not going to happen. Um, need a medium-sized church. Not mega church, not doing that. Not small church. I've also done that. Don't give me no fan and no small church. Not going to do it. Uh, I'm there for the music. Okay? I need somebody that's really breaking it down. I'm there for the theatrics. I need somebody that's passing out. Um, your word can be good. I need some pastors that are keeping it real. Uh, I, I went to one church where he was like, I need them tithes and offerings. Offerings. I got four cars. Me. I kept it real. I ain't going to lie. I, I got I to gotta give them that money. I, I, I've got to give them that money. I felt more inclined to spend. Not the whole, ooh, the expansion project. Nah. Um, and just like how I feel about working out, 45 minutes. Let's get in. Let's get out. Give me that little wine. I can go to sleep at home. I'll be honest, maybe that's my reason that I don't like the songs, because I ain't going to lie. I feel like sometimes, hey, I've listened to this song on the radio. It's like a four-minute song. Singing this chorus for like 10 minutes now. All right. I get it. It depends it depend how it go. It depends how it go. Like I said, hey, yo, I could vibe with it, but at some point, I ain't not. I ain't not, but that's just me. I ain't going to talk bad on church. It's church, man. My parents gave up on the tre- uh, dress code in like high school. So, hey, joggers and hoodie. I don't, I don't know. You be going to church? The joggers. church? Yeah, yeah, I don't do all that now. I, 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 I hey, thought about no. that one time. Never got judged for it. Workout, and I say, no. Nah. You are today, boy. I'm telling you about yeah, three. Well, nah, I feel it. Um, the is getting you. Oh. And uh, I'm just be honest. I, I zone out most of the time. It's my thinking session. It's my thinking hour. Oh. Outside this of um, the church, the game plan for YouTube. This is crazy. Oh, yeah. It's I'm awesome. gonna, just, hey, man. In a I'm just hoodie. Just I'm just keeping it up. Unless it's like, unless it's Christmas, unless it's Christmas church type shit. Like, I'll, I'll just. You heard up, that but. story, though. Huh? You heard that one? What? what? No, not. Wait, what? The Christmas story? Yeah, Jesus was born. You heard that one. That's No, I'm talking about going to church like during Christmas time. That's when I dress up. That's all I'm saying. Oh man! But no, I, I I listen to the preacher when he's preaching. But every every, I try, bro. I ain't gonna lie. But you fake bro, it. You like you fake it. it. Hmm? I know it's gonna sound crazy. You feel like you fake it because at one point in time, I you know I felt the same way. You, you feel like you fake it. Yeah. Okay. As a kid, as a kid, I ain't gonna lie. We ain't perfect. As a kid, yeah, for sure. But I grew up. I grew up to understand. I still fake it. That's why I stopped going. I, I was like, you know what? I just I just do this shit wrong. I guess I don't feel it. I don't mm. think I, I don't I don't complain like I used to. Oh my god, we gotta go to church. But like when I go to church and I was all right, cool, let's go. It's not a big deal to me anymore. But. Mm. Well, recently it was very communal. It was just, and I didn't even go to the service. It was after church. It was just extremely, extremely communal. So I I, I see it. Whether you get the message, the message ain't. I mean, you can read. You know, church was for church used to be a place for people that couldn't read the Bible to have somebody interpret the shit and then give out the money. If you can read, that don't matter no more. You can mm. interpret yourself. The community, though, is very few places where people can get community. And, and church got it. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah, it's one of the rare times my family can just sit down, sit down together with no phone. So I, I felt it. So. The hoodie is crazy. Yeah. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah, that's mine. The closest I came okay. to that was fresh out the workout. I pulled up and I was like, "Nah, Nike Tech's crazy, gang!" And I drove home. <laughs> I literally was like, "Nah, I can't do this, bro." I know they say "come as you are," but you are gonna get judged. All right, let's get into it. Never was. <laughs> Look, Cruz gave us a, a WTF clip of the week, and there's some other stuff to do. There's a lot of stuff to do today. Um, but I want to play this because I feel like, for me personally, as as inappropriate as this may be, this is my actual um, WTF clip of the week. Uh, is that it? Yeah. <sighs> Why Aja Kassin is some bullshit. Well, because it's a bunch of man-made laws that don't make no fucking sense. Oh, for example, in Angola, the age of him. seven years old. In the U.S., the age of consent is 16, sometimes 18 years old. In Bahrain, the age of consent is 21 years old. But in the Bible, God don't say shit about no age of consent. Oh, no. You can't have this conversation without a lot of people calling you a pedophile. And actually, it's the complete opposite. Because I was molested as a child. 
And my only regret is that it didn't happen more often. Eighty percent loss. I could have been taken advantage of by so many other bitches, like my teachers, my mama friends, my friends' mamas. These laws cost me pussy. I believe when you hit puberty, that is your age of consent. Your body tells you when you're ready to fuck, not the government. Game is game. Why? Well, game is not game. knew what was gonna come up. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what game this is. I'm not playing in this game. I don't. I don't know the rules. I beg your pardon. I beg your pardon. I beg your pardon. This ain't my kind of game. This is crazy. I don't want to play that game. Um, I mean, I. I'm trying to think. What is the nah he spit and take here? I mean, I've had a crush on my teacher before. This is crazy. <laughs> Trying to find I told my teacher, I, I, told my I, teacher know, I love her in like second grade. I thought I was in love with my teacher one time. I ah uh, 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 nah. You both I, teacher that? Yeah, no, nah, I ain't gonna lie. I was over here just I was in love with my teacher, man. So you just spitting now. Oh, what she said. Here you go, judging. I was I, man, shit. My teacher was bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's not, not playing. I grew up. I seen it the other day. I was like, oh, so I wasn't tripping. <laughs> so, so that's how it is, bro. But uh, Look at Reefy over here in Kenny Stream right now, in the in the the uh, through the wire voice. I can't think of their name. Numbers on the board, guys. We see you, Reefy. Why are you in they stream? Nah, because I saw Reefy. I, 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 go- I had to go. <laughs> check. I had to go. Check. And Reefy got yeah. Okay, we got something for Reefy. No. Oh <laughs> my. <laughs> Let me at Reefy right now in the Discord because he think he's slick. Hey, what, uh, what is he saying in there? What, what, oh, he's active. We just <laughs> this is so <laughs> no, he, he's crazy active. Man, yeah, I see how it is, Reefy. By the way, uh, hell no. got the numbers on board, man. That's that nigga Mike to play wreck. How about that? Say less. I know that's right, <laughs> Reefy. Uh, uh, bitch ass, yeah, ban him. Um, okay, let's get into some actual basketball since we don't have anything to say about that. Um, I genuinely tried. I don't have anything to say. About oh, that's that. cool. Me too, we need, man. We <laughs> we need to finish our brackets. We need to start <laughs> and finish our brackets. Um. Oh, you back in here? Hey, Reefy. <laughs> nah, no, 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 Reefy. Nah, no, go nah, back nah. over there. Go back on the other side, buddy. <laughs> no. Nah, nigga. Reefy is done. We 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 know when. You can't other stream hot, damn. Out, but- Nah, I we know when someone else pushed that live button. You know I where you go first. I watched the YouTube upload at work. Reefy, come on, bro. We caught your caught. You're caught. Yeah. Uh, audio <laughs> listeners, don't be a Reefy. Um, anyway, mm-hmm. so we got King of the Fourth Quarter. We got Souls and Sage. Like team stand up. Oh, y'all gonna have to kick my vote out because I, I ain't gonna lie. I whether it's ego. Whether it's pride or whatever, man. Look, man, I, I want to be the very best that no one ever was. And I think Soul Sage is about to have a hood classic that's going to change the game of Soul Sage forever on the way. So uh, I'm picking us, but I completely understand. If I got to go down, it's the king of the fourth quarter. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. Um, Bezos? I mean, four. Two of the four voters here on that platform. I feel like we might have to pull this up. I don't know. Or just leave it up to y'all. I don't know. Oh, I'm about good. to say, if you got to exile our vote here, go for it, man. Look, I am prepared to be the guy with all the knives around him here. Hey, I get it. it, it the guy's inspirational, influential. This is a it's a tough out for us, souls. We might not make it here. But damn it, we going to try. And I'm going I'm to die, die by my stance, man. Shout out to Kenny, though, for sure. I'm launching the poll. I'm wa- I'm launching the poll. We can move on to the next one once that poll comes in. We'll we'll so that means Neither of them was taking us there, by the way. That means we're cooked. Okay. That's not <laughs> what was said. Oh my god. No one said that at all, man. We didn't say anything, but nobody said that. Um, all right. Oh, Jimmy wow. Jimmy High Roller or Jeff Teague's podcast. Uh give me James. Give me James High Roller, man. Yeah, I'm taking Jimmy. Uh, Jeff Teague is funnier, and I usually go with the entertainment guy that's also uh, has any level of information to him, even if it's significant. But I don't know. I, I just 
Jimmy's videos are just really entertaining to me. Maybe that's Dick Sucker. Give me Jimbert, man. I, I watch him more than Jeff Teague. Oh, so. my gosh. Jeff Teague, it's not me. Uh, it's them. I am not uh, siding with Jimmy Hyro. I don't even really know who he is. Okay. Mm. Heard about his D10 college uh, career. You were an D10. all-star, buddy. D10? You, you were a one-time all-star in the NBA. You were a lifetime all-star in my heart. So, um, yeah, I just had to put that out there. Indiana's finest. Naptown stand up. Um, okay, Jimmy High Roller. Uh, Dom 2K or Rusty Buckets? Ooh. I'm going to go Dom 2K on this one. Two of my best of friends. Ooh. Um, for me, this is tough, bro. I'm going to say, because Dom be streaming, and maybe that's a bias, that's a Mickey point. I'm going to just say, I'm going to go slightly Dom, but that's that's a tough series, though. I got you. I got you. Let me go over to X real quick. When I type in Rusty Buckets, this is crazy. Uh, let what me see. Both? Rusty be streaming on uh, YouTube. That's very true. Shit. Rusty Buckets. Oh, I, I see. Doesn't follow you. Okay. Uh, now, when I type in Dom 2K, now what if Dom 2K? You follow Rusty. each other. <laughs> there we go. Ah, yeah. I thought you had a joke, didn't you? Uh, nah. Dom 2K does follow me. Rusty doesn't. Give me Dom 2K. Oh, wow. Did Bobby? he unfollow you or just he never followed you? Rusty Buck is, he has unfollowed me ever since he found out I don't tip. So I don't know if there's something I can ever come back from. Uh, Yeah. Now, I think he, he unfollowed me because of a space. I think that's what it was. Yeah. I'm 90% sure that's what it was. I think I saw the tweet about well, it. Well, Miss B Nasty blocked me because of a space. So. Man, but you mean. wasn't. But that wasn't. It had nothing to do with you, though. You got yeah. That was collateral. Block. That's straight collateral, yeah. man. I ain't gonna you got block block collateral damage. I was just a speaker. I was really dope. <laughs> okay, oh, so did, you the, the, did you see? Did you see the poll result? Because it ended. My fault. Yeah, SNS by four. Ooh, it's about to be SNS and let's keep it a bucket. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. I'm down by me. I don't care. Um. What's it called? Okay, B so who do you got out of that? Dom? I, I already said Dom. Oh, okay, okay. So Dom 2K moves on then. Dom 2K moves on. SNS moves on. Um Jimmy High Roller moves on. We're into the last bracket over there. Legend of winning or let's keep it a buck. I mean, hey man. Hey man, we, we literally have It's us. It, it's it, us. It, I don't even know why we're doing this. It's us. <laughs> We literally got we literally got the brother and then three other great co-hosts. What are we talking about? Yeah, yeah I'm about so to say if, even, if, even if you had to go on some if even if you had the power scale low at over nine thousand, dog, we got what are we doing? What are we doing, right? We got us right yeah, here. even think about the, the the characters that come in the low verse. They don't compete with the characters over here in the LKIB verse. So better community by far us. Oh shit. Who are the characters in the Lovers? Aren't we characters in the Lovers? Fuck no. Oh, what? Dude, yeah, that's on you. I'm about to say, you, are you a character in the Lovers? Oh, I'm sure the fuck not. Is, what, damn, Eli? Real Talk Sports? Is that it? KB? Never, KB knows ball. KB is definitely a character. I would never that's claim it. us being character. <laughs> Ask if Lois... If Lois I, Stan Lee, that nigga KB is Spider-Man. Nigga. That I'm saying, Lois Lowe start off that Lakers face. <laughs> What are them four up there? <laughs> what are them four horsemen? Was our guy Dama? I'm just saying, man. Oh, I, that's, that's a Laker thing. That's not a low thing. That was a nigga. We had a great night. What are we talking about? It was I Raquel. Did. It was you. It was gifted. It was KB. Come on, bro. Come on. That's first low for real. No, no, no. no. On, the the first four up there was Low Raquel, Real Talk, who were all hosts, and then me. KB and Gifted came afterwards because niggas start throwing shots at Warriors fans. So both of them came up there afterwards. But the first four was all Lakers shit. It had nothing to do with low. All do with Lakers. Plus, I thought I always thought you made better videos than him back in the day, B Souls. Oh shit. That's such a lie. <laughs> <laughs> That's very true. That is extremely true. Offline souls versus offline low. Comment below. Who you have? Um, Comment below. Okay, souls and sage. Jimmy high roller. Who's better? Hey man, same stance. Um, if if Jimbo is the one to cut the head off, I completely understand. Um, but I'm picking me, bro. I'm sorry, man. We got entertainment and our cameras on. How about that, man? Yeah. 
I'm going to go S, bro. Especially what just, we've been putting out lately. I just feel like we're more versatile. That's all, man. That's let's all. let's take it. Let's take it to the finals. Because on the other side, I know Dom 2K. I know we got him beat. Pause. No Diddy. I know we got him beat, though. All four of us definitely got him beat. It's the most narcissistic bracket. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so Souls and Sage versus LKIAB. That's the real conversation. Now, me personally, me personally, I think LKIB blows SNS out the water. That's just Yikes. me, though. That's just me, though. Yikes. Blowout is crazy. It was a, if it was a bar fight that broke out, and you had SNS versus LKIB, I think LKIB is winning that bar fight. Mm. Do you think you could beat yourself, Sage? No Diddy, but... <laughs> Yo, y'all are being crazy. Y'all are being crazy. <laughs> I'm not even that kind of guy. And that was crazy. Uh, what, what you what you think? B souls can beat you? Yeah, nah. What, oh what? my god. So, so that, that's not what I was going with. That. Okay, look, man. You better beat yourself. Look, man. Here's the thing. I could oh, think god. about this in one of two ways. I could think about this as a completely unfair matchup, or I could think about this as an entirely extremely close to call matchup. Reason being is on one hand. On one hand, a people have commented it below for the trillionth of millionth times that I'm a shit podcaster, a solid YouTuber, and a great streamer. So, so if, if we're going by that scaling, I ain't gonna lie, it's not the same guy. And that's in that sage is kicking this sage's ass, and we have a whole different conversation. However, if we're going by what I believe to be the case, then I think this is a somewhat setup matchup for SNS. Because SNS is right the fuck here. It's, it's yeah. just like, ah, like. You, you don't want to vote it. Y'all voted Jamie, Jimmy Harrell over you. Hey. Are you uh, over hey, Jimmy Harrell? Shouldn't have put us on there. I ain't going to lie. <laughs> shouldn't, shouldn't have put us on there. Say, so, uh, where do you think the better version of you is? Between the between two the, Between the two. I mean, people say I'm a bad podcaster and it's live. So I guess I go with the time that I, if I fuck up, I get to edit. Yes. <laughs> so, so I guess but, Me too. Oh, people but like I, <laughs> wow. I, I, I'm just being honest. I mean, My I dude, don't I just got more space in there. You know what I'm saying? I don't like, I a little bit more. nerf myself on the podcast, but this is what most of the people feel. And y'all then, are more live than anybody else on the platform too. So it's crazy that y'all are saying the the worst version, comparatively speaking, is the non live version. What they I'm see? I mean, I'm, I'm just saying, I man. Think, I, I think Watch I'm the SNS cool. vids, Damo. I mean, you you was in SNS. Well, that's a spoiler, but you are in uh, a future uh, SNS vid, man. Don't I got more space to work with? Just generally speaking, you said, don't I got more space to work with? I'm not coming up with all these points, uh, Mr. Omizi, and any person in the comment section. I'm going off based on one, what I'm told. Two. That my live streams ain't like a again a keep it a bug live stream because it's different topics. But three most importantly, bro, I'll be fucking up. <laughs> I'll be fucking up too much over here. And if I get a second opportunity um, in an offline recording, I feel like that barely makes it. But I think it's like same. In my personal opinion, I think it's an even matchup. But... Let me ask the real question because I know I know Damo's answer. Not I know Damo's answer. Two y'all two. Two y'all two. Something happens tomorrow. You have to let go of one of the platforms. <gasps> Which one is it? Oof. You can you can let go of the, the pod and you can keep doing Souls and Sage, or you can let go of Souls and Sage and keep doing a pod. Everything else in your life will remain the same. Crazy question. Really, I think it I think it comes down to which do you think has the highest upside? Which one has the lowest floor? <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> um the lowest floor is crazy. highest floor, highest it's floor. It's time. <laughs> Which has the lowest floor. It's That's time. what I'm avoiding. Let me check the revenue. Nah, I'm just, <laughs> uh, I just got what he meant by his time. Oh yeah, Sage about to battle that toilet. My fault. Go ahead. Damn. Um, I hope that's not what he's saying because he needs he needs the answer. I'll probably Text do the I'll, I'll probably do the pod. I'll keep the pod. I'll rest keep the pod? Okay. Yeah, I just feel like it's a, it's a, it's it's just a way more versatile platform, you know. It's not all basketball. We can talk about church, the same, uh, you know, pod. We talk about Luca, you know. It's just more versatile. So, 
Sage isn't Sage isn't here to answer the question. I wish he was. I wish he was here to answer. He caught it. It, it came. Now, does that mean it's a better platform? I don't know. I just don't know. Oh, but to answer that question, yeah. You know? I feel like Sage Sage caught the the poop itis at the right time. Did he text? Did he text in the group chat? Did he no. say which one he would? No. That's such a. That's such a coward. You coward. Colin coward. <laughs> A super convenient time to have to take a shit. I'm saying. All right, so it looks like let's keep it a buck one and three one, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> let's keep it on our March Madness bracket. Um, I think it was very, very biased, if you ask me. If you have anything that contradicts this bracket, if you feel like it should have gone a different direction, send it in. Send it in. Send us who your final four would be. Send us who's going to the championship, and then send us who won. Send that in to us. Just let us know in the comment section, all that stuff. Rate, comment, subscribe, <laughs> like. Don't they be saying that throughout the videos and stuff like that on YouTube? YouTube is so cringy. Being a YouTuber is cringy, isn't it? You gotta do cringy shit. No? There's no know? basketball to talk about? Oh, I'm just asking. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> You know, come on, man. You just, you just said, oh, you know, we can be versatile. We can talk about everything. We can talk about other stuff that's not basketball. I mean, yeah. That was nasty. Being a YouTuber is cringy. Ah, ah, why we got to talk about that? Why we got to talk about that? All right. We'll get into some basketball. Where is it at? Damn. I just really want to hear this button. Um... I don't know where I want to start. Actually, 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 let's start with LeBron first. Let's start with LeBron first. Let's start with uh, Papa. I think you think in his household they call him Daddy. You think Bryce and Bronny call him Daddy? Mm, nah, I don't think so. I think they call him like probably call him some goofy shit. King. <laughs> King is crazy. The chosen one. King is crazy. They call him Brian. Oh, they call him like OG. <laughs> Somebody said La Pops is crazy. If they go around calling you know, La Pops is wild. They call Brian Unk. <laughs> LBJ. <laughs> Bron Bron. <laughs> what if they call their dad Bron Bron? Yo, Bron Bron. Yo. Somebody said Akron Hammer. Yo. <laughs> Yo, what? <laughs> what are some. Let me look up LeBron's name. <laughs> Cause that, that would be crazy. You gotta have some out there ones. A <laughs> hundred best nicknames for LeBron James in 2024. Number four will shock you. That's exactly <laughs> your daddy. <laughs> um, throughout his career, Bron Bron, Akron's finest, the Akron Hammer, LeBald, LeFlop, Le Chase, Le Trade, Le GM, LeBronica. Uh, the Akron Assassin, the Akron Avenger, the Akron Annihilator, uh, La Sweep. I don't who Lebozo James. <laughs> <laughs> can I can I put one out here that I see on basketball reference that stole me the fuck off? Okay. Well, two actually. One, the little emperor. Who the fuck called him that? Um, and two, this one got me. Benjamin Buckets. Hey, Nobody's that's me. That. On, way. I don't know who, who's ever called this nigga Benjamin Buckets. What? Somebody called. I'm on his. I'm on Reddit. This is Reddit Sons, and they asked the same question. Somebody said, Le, "Not even close to Mike. LeBron James just wants to have his own flu game so bad." Yo, what are you doing, Doug? <laughs> that would be 2014. <laughs> <laughs> what are they doing? Um, he not waste time. He was take his shot at Braun. I'm saying, bro, I, I can't stand them people. That's not the question, bro. Please. They use every every chance they get to disrespect this nigga LeBron. Yeah, how do LeBron? How do new LeBron shoes look? Well, I tell you what, they're not. It's probably Jordan. I ain't never seen nigga wear LeBron with jeans. All right, what are we? Doing? Hey, what? I was just about to say, Nate Robinson is a clown. Nate Robinson is a clown. I ain't never seen niggas wear LeBrons with jeans. Like, nigga, what is that? What is that gonna do with basketball? What are we? They asked ask Michael Beasley, "Yo, who's the goat?" 
Mike, oh, oh yeah, all these things basketball related make LeBron the GOAT. Okay, the records, you throw the records up there, no names. This is why LeBron James is the GOAT. Nate Robinson, <laughs> what you wear with your jeans, nigga? LeBron 10. <laughs> I said that boy nice talk, man. Yeah. I hate when niggas start talking about how great Jordan is. That nigga, as soon as he started, there's no real comparison when you compare Mike and LeBron. When you think about it, the dream team, he was a superstar. Everyone was autographed. What they got to do about basketball? Like, what? <laughs> what? 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 I hate these that kids, shit. These, these kids don't Y'all understand. Y'all kids don't know nothing, man. Y'all don't know what it's like waking up on Saturday mornings playing a Be Like Mike cassette tapes. Why are we, what? Why is nostalgia here? What talk basketball? Nigga, what NBA is, Sundays on NBC. NBC. What? Sometimes I be like a dream. Yo, if you was watching NBA on NBC, you were old, bro. Oh my god. They be doing that. They be doing that with AI too. They you see all these people wearing headbands? That was AI. Okay. He's clearly better than Wade. I guess. Bruh, I don't know. <laughs> no, we were. I was on PC. This shit happened recently. This nigga Ron was talking about how AI is better than Harden. I'm like, all right, Ron, before you even go, tell me right now what makes James Harden worse than Allen Iverson and stick to basketball. Just tell me basketball stuff on the court. I mean, no, no, no. He started going. He was like, nah. Why? I was like, tell me why AI is better than James Harden. Oh, uh, you, you know, that man James, what culture did he change? I'm like, stop. Right there, stop. <laughs> Stick to basketball. <laughs> Tell me why AI is better than James Harden with just basketball. I mean, <laughs> James Harden ain't got, you know, the crossover. The, he, <laughs> AI influence and one. I'm fine, bro. Like, what are we? All right, you either put down James or you're bringing up and one. Like, why are we not talking about what AI can do? Nah, it's, it's different. Sure, it is. La aura type shit for real, for real, and things of that nature. Yeah, um, Ron got your ass. Yeah, Ron, yeah. Ron packed them up. He sent Shaq on him. Uh, <laughs> got me. Beat okay. it now. <laughs> WhatsApp, right? Look at some WhatsApp. You're sick. Telegram, telegram, telegram. <laughs> I don't use iMessage. All right, so the the third episode, I think, uh, I think it's third episode of LeBron James and JJ Reddick's podcast came out. Two. Um, I think this is. I thought this was three, but episode two, fine. Two. Um, and so LeBron James and JJ, of course, they sat down. They got some water. They got some wine, and they they're having some great conversations. Um, they start talking about what really irks them in the basketball sphere, and I, you know, I'm probably going to be in agreement with. The king here on this one, but let's just tap in. Let's tap in so we can learn a couple of things. The matchup thing. So if I go switch on you, mm-hmm. right? You've now got a favorable matchup. Part of it is not just so that you can get a shot. Part of it, like basketball, boils down to: can you put two on the ball? Yeah. And now you create the four on three on the backside. Yeah. I don't think many people know that. You know why? Because everyone now is a narrative of this thing called. I have a bag Mm. or he doesn't have a bag. It bothers the fuck out of me. Everyone thinks just because you get a favorable matchup that it means it's one-on-one time. Let's play ones. That's all you hear the kids talk about now. You want to play ones? You want to play ones? What what the fuck is this? This is not not Jordan versus Bird Nintendo. (laughs) Like, (laughs) it's five on five. And yes, as a man that was born in 81. Okay. <laughs> Jordan versus Bird Nintendo. What are you doing? That nigga showed his age. That nigga's the oldest nigga in the NBA, boy. I swear. <laughs> that nigga the oldest nigga now, boy. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Nigga, you was bringing a PlayStation 2 with you on road trips. Why did we just... You could have said... Oh, like, why did you... Oh, my gosh. Like, what? I know he get mad when his young teammates be doing stuff. Pulling out oh, a Nintendo boy. Switch. Nigga, he got... I, I was thinking when he was saying this. I'm like, yeah, this nigga had too many talks with Bronny, nigga. He is upset with his new generation's mindset. Oh, it's <laughs> pissed him off. That's why. That's why him and Gilbert. Gilbert be telling Bronny something else. Yeah, go go be a Ferrari, a Maserati. 
he be telling he be telling Bronny, uh, 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 this ain't limb bias uh, <laughs> versus artist Gilmore. Okay, SNES. Okay, <laughs> but pass that motherfucking ball. That nigga LeBron told Gil, yo, don't train my son no more. No he stopped more. taking the trainings. He, he started getting the pack. He started shooting D3. <laughs> What's going on? Where, where the training? All right, let's wait for You have an opportunity to have a favorable matchup, and you can beat your man, but realize something. Most great teams are going to send help, and can you make the right reads? Can you make the right reads? Can you instill confidence in your teammates to win, you've scored twice on that favorable matchup. Do you know that the double is coming? And you have to see it either coming from the tilt on the baseline or from the fire from the nail. You have to be ready for that. Ah, the fire. Like, and it takes time for guys. And some guys don't want to learn and won't learn because they just want to play once. They, I've had guys on the court that literally said to me before, why y'all doubling me? Mm. Stop doubling me. Let me play once. Devin. Devin you Booker. Have 40. <laughs> no. JJ Reddy don't know nothing about that. JJ Reddy ain't never had 40. All right. <laughs> yo, every, yo, everybody. Yo, as soon as he said, I had somebody tell me he went 40. Why are you doubling? Everybody thought Devin Booker. That was that was the yeah. book. <laughs> JJ Reddy laughing because he ain't had this shit having them since high school. So no, you have 40. We're going to W. Not because, not only because you're great, but also I know none of your teammates have been in a rhythm all game. And we're going to see if they can make a shot. And if they do, Derek Jeter, salute, cap to you. Yeah, they did ready to take your notes. Score 40. Fire. Nail. Nail. Now you knew that, man. All right, man. Well, let me address some of the chat because I seen y'all already dick sucking in chat. Oh, you no. calling out beast souls? LeBron calling out beast souls. First of all, I already made a video today addressing all of this. And I think it's important to understand that there are two conversations being had over here. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Number one is who has a bag and how deep it is. And number two, how much it matters. The conversation I've always been having is just how good someone's bag is. Is it a 90 overall? Is it a 70 overall? That's all. Even in those videos, rewatch them. I have always said, like what LeBron just said, bro, I don't give a fuck if you have a bag, if you are effective. I've always been on that camp, especially if that shit does not drop off in the playoffs. Especially if it doesn't drop. Shaq, LeBron, Giannis, I've always been on that side. So I don't, I don't get this whole backtracking thing. I have always been consistent. So I don't get I just don't get the pushback on me. Now, if there is someone who actually deserves to get pushback, it's BDS. I ain't gonna lie. If we talk about the mayor of Bag Talk Twitter, that's BDS. So I'm just saying. Yeah. Go ahead, Damo, because yeah. yeah. Cook me, I guess. He tried to, yeah, he tried to uh he tried to escape that. So try to what? I mean it's it's ironic. It's ironic. One day. Bronze comment, hey, good shit, buddy. Wine glass emoji. He thinks shit's good. So you scroll down that catalog and see him on the face of who got a bigger bag? Bron got a nickel bag. Now Bron's talking about this bag shit don't matter, and it's ah, I, I've always been on Bron's side. I've always been. Uh, I've always, I always, always, always matter. <laughs> I always have. Yeah, sure, buddy. All right, bro. Sure, if we, buddy. all right, bro. Okay. Okay, Damo. <laughs> first of all, first of all, they did you they are wearing the same exact clothes from last fucking week, bro. The Whoa. same exact clothes. Whoa. Yes, they are. Oh, this is hate. He said he Damo just said I changed up my energy after they fucking commented. And now the next episode, they're saying some different shit. Bro, they're wearing the same exact fucking clothes. It's from one recording. Whoa, you hating. That's hate, dog. What you the? saying they all right, bro. You saying they dirty? No. They no. clean. Okay, okay. Hey, so clean they had to wear that shit again, right? Right. <laughs> wow, that was crazy, dog. Literally, the pick the picker clip is from that pod, but not the first episode. Be so it's cool, it's cool, it's cool, man. It's all right, it's all right. It's all right. You, were, you were wrong for judging bags. Like, literally, you were wrong for that. I guess. Yeah, you were I don't wrong even wrong think LeBron denied that a bag exists or not, but 
I guess. I agree with them. Does it exist or not? Let's 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 bring it in. I I mean, ultimately, I agree with LeBron James. I think in the real world, I, I want to ask y'all when did when did bag talk or bag conversation, um, like when did that when did that become a thing for real for real? Oh, from y'all, um, from my perspective, bag talk started around the time Harden won the MVP. 2018, 2019. It either started with Harden and it peaked around the time him and Giannis was going at it when it was rim run versus bag, or it just yeah, that, that was really it. One of those two though. It started in the apex of Harden changing the game with how the game was being played with ISO style and foul baiting and shit like that and gather step rules, or the the what you call it, Giannis versus James Harden situation. I mean the the phrase "getting into his bag." I've I've used that for a minute now, even before that time. Is that just me though? I don't know. But, but even even that, because like, and I know it's gonna be nasty because I'm saying Carl Malone, but they might have even said that about '97. Carl Malone. Uh oh, Carl Malone's getting into his bag. But we know his bag was like a post up. Okay, he's getting into his bag. Cool. When did it become like what Damo's saying? We're differentiating. Oh, uh oh. So and so has a better bag. This this person's dribbling more. Or this person's facing up more. Da 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 da. Because you're right, B souls. Uh, the probably the the verbiage. Oh, this bag. This bag has always existed. Mm -hmm. But now we're making the distinction as to as as compared to in the past. Shaq had a bag. He was in his bag when he was posting up, elbowing people, drop step. That was his bag. But now people would say, Oh, Shaq. Shaq doesn't have a bag. He wouldn't be able to exist in today's game. Type B. I say 2010, 2011. Uh, 2010, 2011 showed uh, you had guys like Kobe Bryant, Paul Pierce to a lesser degree by some of you guys. Um, J Iso, Joe, Jamal Crawford, Kyrie Irving is in that draft class. I'd say 2011 is when bag talk really started for real. Um, 2010, 2011, sorry. is when it really started for real because a lot of people had those skills, had those bags. Uh, where the apex of it was, Oh, yeah, and Kemba was in the draft, too. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, where the apex of it was, I think I'm going a bit earlier than James Harden, to be honest. The Kyrie Curry conversation started the shit off. When motherfuckers was comparing Kyrie and Curry, well, how is Kyrie possibly better than Curry? He has a he has a deeper bag. He has better skill. That's what really started it. And if you, I mean, that was really the peak for me, or at least the first enter your prime thing. If that's wrong, then Domo's answer is one thousand percent correct. By the way, round two is coming up, chat. Round two is coming up. Hey yo, Jesus. Christ. Okay. Yeah. Job not finished. <laughs> I'm sorry. So then I want to I want to ask y'all. How serious do y'all take into consideration the whole bag thing? Like, does that really play into how you value a player? You put an X player over X player because they have a bigger bag. Not that much. <laughs> oh, Domo, you mute again. Oh, damn, I am muted. For me, it goes into, <clears throat> it depends on the context that we're using this, what players we're comparing, and what you're necessarily considering their bag or what we're talking about. If you're being, if we're getting to the the nitty gritty of things, and we're comparing Kyrie and Steph, and you're about to sit here and talk to me about, no nah, man, Steph's bag is Kyrie's bag is just deeper. I'm like, all right, Kyrie versus Steph, we're having a bag talk right now. Nigga, this is pointless. The both of them got a pretty deep bag. Cool, Kyrie probably does a couple more moves. That's fine. But if we're talking about, I don't know, Singoon versus Giannis, offensively, and then I start, then we start breaking it down. All right, well, I mean. Giannis bag is, you know, A B. Singoon is he's up to J at this point. He's only in year three. Like, I don't know. Like at that point, it's kind of more fair. If you're arguing with it in the right way or it makes sense, I'm all for it. But once you just start using bag for random hoopla nonsense, I'm not listening to you. Yeah, Damo alluded to my answer. Didn't exactly uh have the same one for me. Um, I'm not gonna lie. Doesn't matter to me that much, to be very honest, because oftentimes we're having conversations between other great players. However, if we're having a conversation about a player that has like a satchel, a purse, um, a, like you know, 
two moves, three moves. Okay, at that point, yeah, we have a conversation because it's like, okay, what if a defense is able to make the the right adjustments or the, has the personnel to stop said one to three plays? Then, okay, well, shit, I ain't going to lie. We've seen them Giannis post touches. I die by it. It's, it's shit like that. So I think um, in general, for the most part, it does matter. But when we're having these conversations with these all-time great talents, and as the 2020s evolves to where everyone has a bag, eventually the conversation just dwindles down. Yeah, to me, again, like I said earlier, it only matters if your offensive production drops off in the playoffs. So let's just say you're averaging, I don't know, 33 points on 60% true shooting in the regular season, and then we go into the playoffs routinely, not just once, but routinely that shit drops to 26 points on 55% true shooting, and then we look at the footage, and it's we can see it's because uh, you don't have a, 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 Jesus Christ, you don't have a versatile offensive bag to the point where it's much easier to game plan uh, for you than compared to other players. That's the only time it matters to me. And maybe if, like, we're comparing two dudes who produce at similar offensive rates. So, again, to, going back to the example, you're both uh, averaging 30 points a game in the playoffs on 60% true shooting, but one is a much more versatile scorer than the other. Then I'm probably going to take the more versatile scorer than the not as versatile scorer if efficiency is literally the same. But that's that's pretty much it. All, all I care about is offensively is, is going to sound nerdy and analytical shit is efficiency. At the end of the day, if you can put the ball in the bucket at an efficient rate and whatever bag you got, even if it's four or five moves, is getting you that and they can't do anything about it in high leverage situations, in important games, in game sevens, in the NBA finals, I don't I don't care how deep your bag is. What, so. What's crazy is, I was about to say, what's, yeah, I think that's what's crazy. The guys with the... I, I, this might even be like a throughout NBA history thing. The guys with the deeper bags don't win shit. They don't win shit. And really, we sitting here criticizing them guys right now. Am I wrong? Now I see you. I see you scrunched up your face. When we I'm when we talk about when we talk about real quick when we talk about bag talk guys. And I I'm, I'm gonna go current, and then we could think of some guys in the past. But when we think about like NBA guys with deep bags. I'm mm -hmm. talking about Jason Tatum. I'm talking about Devin Booker. I'm talking about from even the big position, Joel Embiid. I'm talking about Luka Doncic. I'm talking about Kyrie Irving. Uh, I'm talking about – did I say Devin? I said Devin Booker, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're talking about potentially like a, a Kevin Durant. We're talking about a Steph Curry. I think I've named, what, three champions out of the ten guys listed or whatever the case may be. Yeah, and even trying to replicate those things, Kyrie got it with LeBron James. Like, go, go ahead. I, just, I don't I think mean, it's I, I feel what you're saying, but I, I feel like that's, I don't want to say disingenuous, but, I mean, only one team wins each year. So, I mean, every year, damn near, majority of the bad guys, bad guys lose. But to ignore the years where bad guys, guys would be bags, I, and that then it'll be a semantic conversation about who's considered a bag guy. Mm -hmm. Because if I say Jamal Murray and Jokic, I think those are bad guys. Those guys have bags, especially Jamal Murray. Like Jamal Murray is one of the shifty scoring point guards. Who uh, uh, Anthony Davis has a bag. Like Anthony Davis, has, in terms of bigs, in terms of ways to score, especially in today's NBA, especially in twenty twenty, he had a bag. Like let a, me, a let pretty big bag. Let me so, ask you this. Let me ask you this. I'm going to mm -hmm. go down the list of NBA champions. Just, this is going to be quick. Mm -hmm. If you think that their A, not their B, but their A, has a bag, mm -hmm. then we can count it. Not their okay. B, but their A. And and I'll say bag. I know you said this, too. This will be hard. I, if, you, if we disagree, it's fine. But just general consensus, people would say, hey, this guy's got a bag. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I ain't going to play stupid. Yeah. Um, Denver Nuggets. Jokic, I think, yes. Yeah, I think most people, funny enough, would say he got a bag. Yeah. 22 Warriors. Steph Curry. Yes. Yeah. yeah. 21 Bucks. No. Nope. Nah. 20 Lakers. Yes. Depends who you think is the best. LeBron? Because <laughs> yeah. some people, I'm people, gonna, are, I'm, people I'm, are I've been, on, I've been on record. Yeah. I've been on record saying AD was our finals MVP. He was our champ. He was the best player. I've said that since then. Like, I've, so I, I believe it. If it was LeBron, would your opinion change? No, it wouldn't. I think LeBron has that's a bag. Fine. That's fine. That's fine. Yeah, I, I'll I'll say it should be yes, but by public, if LeBron's the best, no. For me. 
Uh, 19 Raptors. No. Kawhi. Kawhi has a bag, yes. Cool Satchel, no. Mm, no, I'm going to go now. I'm going to go now. Uh, 18 Warriors, 17 Warriors. We won't spend too much time. Uh, 16 Cavs. Again, yes. Again, it does LeBron, LeBron have a bag again. He's not seen as a bag talk guy, but we all think he has a bag yet. Yeah. All right. Uh, 15 Warriors. We won't spend any time there. Uh, this is where things kind of fall off the wagon. 14 mm. Spurs. Nah. No. No shot that team is no. bag talk. At the, Kawhi at that time, no. Yeah. 13 and 12 uh, Miami Heat. Yes. You know what? LeBron's bag isn't as extravagant as it is in his later years. So if it's already a sus conversation, you could debate no even stronger here. I personally still would say yes, but it's a debate. Um, I don't know, because we even I asked y'all like it's passing a part of a bag too, and we had different answers on that. And I was one of the people to say yes. So I so as you know this, I said yes in that. So. And I personally, I personally said no. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go no in this version of LeBron. Yeah, I'm gonna go no too. I think general consensus. And 2016, LeBron is like borderline too. Yeah. Uh, 2011 Mavericks. Dirk had a bag. Yes, Dirk got a bag. Yeah. Okay. Uh, 10 Lakers. Yep. Kobe, Kobe yes. Sure has a bag. Kobe, yeah. yes. Eight Celtics. Paul Pierce, yes. Paul Pierce had a bag. Paul Pierce had a bag. Yeah, Paul sure. Pierce had a bag. <laughs> All right, here we go. He was the best player, though, but yeah, seven, seven Spurs. Yes, Tim Duncan had a bag. Prime Tim well, Duncan has a bag. I, he he does it. He's just too not viewed that way for me. But yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. In terms of this conversation, yeah, I'm he's not literally be, viewed as I'm the not boring be superstar. Be so. honest, because then at that point, I would count a guy like Giannis at that fucking point. Yeah. Uh, what? Well, not, they don't have the same. Yeah, I, I know you was going to. Oh six. Uh, in general, in general, uh, other people would count. Oh six. He. Uh, yes, Dwayne Wade had a bag. Yes, all right. Oh five Spurs. Uh, for the ones that are saying no, they'll say no, and Don will say yes. Uh, oh four Pistons. No, no. no. I'm gonna say no. I'm just not familiar, too familiar with how Chance Gold was getting down. So I'm gonna say no. I'm gonna say yes because I am familiar. <laughs> I say yes yeah, because I'm ignorant to it. I'm gonna say no. He is a, he is a cooker. Um. Mm-hmm. Okay, this is where it starts to get even more ugly. Oh three Spurs. I'm still gonna keep my yes. <clears throat> no, okay. I'm, gonna keep, I'm gonna keep the no. For um, O two, well, three Pete Lakers. It's no, right. no uh, Lakers at all. Ninety nine Spurs. No, keep no. my yes. Three Pete Bulls. Jordan. Yes. I would go yes. Okay. Ninety five, ninety four. Um, Rocky. Rocky. Hakeem. Yes. Yeah, definitely. First three Pete Bulls. Yeah. And still Jordan. Yeah. Um. <laughs> um, two Pete, uh, 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 Detroit Pistons here. It yes. Joe Dumars won yeah. the final yeah. rookie. I just want to remind people. Yeah, Joe mm-hmm. Dumars did, think, but yeah. I still think I was the best player. Uh-huh. So, um, eighty-eight, eighty-seven, uh, Lakers. Magic. Magic. I'm gonna say yes. Oh, okay. Again, it depends on yeah. the, the passing bag thing. Okay. Yeah, that, that that's a hundred percent of the passing bag conversation. If you don't, on my definition, passing, you know. not really considering passing, I'm gonna go no. Okay, I do qualify passing, so I would say yes. But if that, I don't think qualify, I don't think consensus would say that about Magic. Yeah, yeah, consensus wise, yeah, Magic's out. Um, yeah, Magic's out. But. There's a couple people here saying yes about MJ. That, and that's but that's what I was finna say. I think consent, but I, I'm not going. I'm not going to stop us because we're, we're making. We're, Decent time. Um, 86 Celtics. Bird. Labor has a bag. Yes. Yeah. 85 Lakers. Magic still has a bag. Yes. Kareem? No. I, again, I think Magic's the best oh, Lakers. That's fine. Um, 84 Celtics. Larry Bird has a bag. Yes. Y'all know I'm done with these. <laughs> um, no, we're we're no, getting to the point where I, it's getting shaky. No, no, y'all know what I'm doing. <laughs> we, we we would have to be reaching for a bag, right? 83 yeah. Sixers. I'm not gonna go in the 70s because I think people would say, but 83. Moses uh, Malone. I'm not gonna say Moses Malone had a bag. As far as I know, he was a rebound merchant and a get back guy. But this could be ignorance. I'm not familiar with it too much with his game. So if old head wants to school me on Moses Malone, please be my guest. Same thing. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna just copy it right there because I'm bouncing back between the Lakers and the Celtics. I mean, I guess it would define what you 
to say is a bag or whatever the case. To 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 me, what it really is in this conversation, if you feel like this player is better than that player, say it. Mm-hmm. I don't even care for all the making up of new things to justify why one player is better than the next player. I was in the Twitter spaces today. Yo, <laughs> 20, 2015 Jeff Teague, top five point guard, man. I'm going to die on the hill. Y'all cannot move me off that hill. And I went back and forth. At the end of the day, I didn't have to explain it. Hey, that boy is good. Period, point blank. I don't have to go on, oh, well, let's examine bags. Who's got a deeper bag? What do you quantify as a bag? Who has the killer instinct? Because I think that these things fall into that category as well. Who's got the mamba mentality? Who's a real... Uh, a team guy versus not a team guy who's more coachable. All that bullshit to me falls into a category of, well, let me add some things to try to make this player over this player. Cause it is going to make some sense to me. I've been, I've been having these conversations this week about um, Caitlin Clark and on the women's side and stuff like that. And Paige being a better uh, uh, three point shooter. And the bullshit things that they gave me, all form and who's more clutch with it and all this other shit. Come on, bro. I don't need all that. Just if you feel like one person is better, that's fine. Die on that hill. If you don't have no real justification, if you can't point straight to the stats or something that we can look at and say, hey, this is why this person is better, then just say. What was their argument? What was their argument for Paige? (sighs) Uh, Somebody said percentages, but then once I killed the percentages argument it was how they take them who takes smarter shots and all this other stuff like that i was like come on bro like shut the hell up honestly shut the fuck up Mm. just shut up if you think Paige is better if you think she takes smarter shots if you think if you if you just like this person better just say you like them better yeah i'm hey i'm definitely on that message of bro (laughs) stop with these Roller coaster justifications to get to some sort of conclusion that you like it, it. There's other news we could talk about too. Um, I'm gonna be honest, I don't want to make it too political, but that uh, the Baltimore Bridge uh mayor and oh that whole thing, like bro, if you don't like him, just say that, bro. All this justification about how professional he is, if you don't like him, just say that type shit. And other things that we've talked about before, bro, like if you just don't like the player, if you don't just like the per- if you just don't like the person, just say that. I think the bad conversation just gets problematic to me, like really problematic when you justify it as the main reason why one person is uh, one player is better than the other. And that's why I said earlier, I personally think this is more of a shot of a platform, uh, more shot, uh, more of a shot at a platform like BDS um, because he is like the guy really leading that. Yo, the ranking should be based off of who has a better bag. Like, he has a hooper, hooper list. Like, he, he's really that guy in terms of that narrative. So, yeah. Also, compare compare bad guys to bad guys. I didn't mean to cut you off, Sage. Can, compare bad guys to bad guys. Like, I think Chris Paul is, like, one of the last traditional, just pretty standard point guards. Well, I, I, I might be able to put, like, John Wall in them in that category. Just traditional standard point guard. I don't know what's the point of comparing him to like a, a Kyrie Irving or a Ray for Austin or something like that because their handles look like this and who turns the ball over and stuff like that. Just, if you're gonna if you're gonna put those guys in this bad category, all right, we're gonna compare the bad guys with the bad guys, and then I guess the more traditional guys, the get it done guys, with the, the get it done guys. That, maybe you don't, you don't think Chris Paul is a bad though. I didn't say that. But yeah, oh, and and okay. that's what I was gonna talk about. I I think even in w- the way we did it wasn't necessarily an optimal way of getting a point across because with a player like Tim Duncan, a player like Chris Paul, two players who obviously have bags for the love of God. I know you typed it, delete it. For the love of Lord, these players have bags. However, calling them a bad guy would also be ridiculous when you consider the players that you would then describe as bad guys. For example, Chris Paul and Kyrie Irving do not play basketball, do not score the same way. It's not even remotely close. (laughs) Tim Duncan and Dirk Nowitzki do not score the ball the same way. Not even remotely close. So I think the 
the messed up part about this conversation is there's also subsections of it, and I'm glad it happened this way so we could identify it even further because it's obvious uh, what you and B Souls were alluding to in the sense of are you really just trying to say who's better? And then it goes into are you trying to say this person doesn't have a bag? And it's like, well, no, obviously a good amount of these players have a bag. There are certain players where someone may stand 10 toes and say they don't have a bag. Hell, that's where the whole Giannis James Harden thing started from. But for majority of these all-time great players, the answer is yes, they have a bag. But would you call them a bag talk guy? Hell no. Yeah. And plus that that, that definitely changes over the era too. That's why it's, that's why it's stupid. Because if AI gets on a podcast and say, yo, I only had the right to left, not the left to right crossover. And then a guy that we don't think has a bag, like, hell, Andre Miller or something like that, has a right to left and a left to right. Are we saying that he has more of a bag than Allen Iverson? Yeah, never do it. They'll call AI a lie. Just say, just, you're talking about handles, and you're talking about the way people shoot the basketball. If he can turn over left shoulder, turn over right shoulder. Um, if, if he can do the Anthony Edwards the other day with the, all the footwork, this is this is bag. I don't count for a, a passing like we talked about earlier. Defense that that doesn't that doesn't take into consideration none of that other stuff when we talk about bag. Who got the better handle, and you know who can shoot differently? I guess I don't know. how sexy the bucket looks. We ain't gotta play stupid for niggas. It's how how sexy does the bucket look? If the bucket looks cool, if it was just a catch and fade. We don't care. If it was a pass, you guys barely care. That's why y'all ask. Um, I'm not making an edit type shit. <laughs> really? You wanted me to play this? On complete. Get harder and harder. Each level, all right? You know, y'all play Call of Duty. Y'all know what that means going to the next level. Y'all play Mario, brother. You know what it means? It's Super Contra when it goes to the next level. Hold on. Super Contra. <laughs> what the fuck? Y'all play Mario, brothers. Y'all know what that means. Damn. This is the last time y'all played Mario, for real. <laughs> Just generic. Y'all play Mario Brothers. You know what it means? It's Super Contra when it goes to the next. Next to you know, I'll say level two. So level two is upon us. Like you said, tomorrow, decompress, get away from the game, and then we come we get back locked in. Right. I go run. My goat is old as hell. <laughs> well. How does we go from Call of Duty to Mario? Like it's just a choice of words. <laughs> no, I say those are two entirely different consoles, man. Audience Contra. Oh my God. Um, Sage, because Chad thinks that you try to duck and avoid the question. Yeah, I was gonna say. Um, my quite my answer. Um, I didn't think about it. I couldn't think about that shit. But it was done. Um, hmm. You got to give up one of the platforms, the Potter, hmm. Soul and Sage. So let so let's 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 really talk about it business. Why right? let's talk let's talk business, right? So obviously, in terms of who the fuck is that? oh this thing? things up in, ter- in terms of wait, why is he up here? <laughs> in terms of um in terms of obviously the the financial stuff, you know, obviously it's just us two. So I could be a greedy oink oink and go s and s. However, here's the thing, right? When we talking about similar conversations, we have both of those conversations on either platform. Granted, I have lesser time to get certain ideas off certain jokes off certain takes off but at the end of the day that's not going missing and keep it a buck right um the channel size is pretty much in, in the same territory same stratosphere but ultimately at the end of the day i ain't gonna lie bro souls you should be saying souls and sage because you built your channel since day one You've you've had that shit since day one. You got where you needed to be. Then I came along. We made SNS great. And I think SNS is getting even better by the day. However, for me personally, bro, keep it a buck like the baby, bro. Like I like I like this, this is, I've nurtured this nigga. Like, like I've raised I mean, this motherfucker, bro. I was here from day one too. <laughs> I'm saying, but I, but, but it, it's 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 a difference though. That's like your first time over there. It's a like this. This is like from the ten day contracts to the flights to Atlanta to meeting to getting legitimately three new friends on the shit to then meeting the producing crew and getting more friends through that. I got I got TSO niggas that I met through Keep It a Buck. It's it's a lot for me to just sit here and say yeah nah Keep It a Buck meet the woo. Um, 
And inevitably, at the end of the day, also, at the end of the day, I've always told b so any given moment, bro, you tired of SNS and you want to take your channel back, go ahead, bro. I love what I got over at SNS. And I ultimately, I ain't going to lie. There's some times where, hey, I like SNS videos over this uh, Keep It A Buck videos at times, for sure. But um, I'm going to go ahead and say in a tough seven games, give me Keep It A Buck, man. Clean sweep type shit. I didn't, I didn't play this from Gilbert. Um let me see this because this is about the bag conversation. I thought this was something else. It wasn't NBA players. It wasn't the people who got a bag. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so, it's not them saying what they have. It's that whole thing of skill. Like the definitions that's coming for into the game is coming from people who haven't played the game, who's not in the game. They're just watching it and they're coining it. Right. And then becomes overused and overrated. Right. So it's like, you know, this person has a bag, this person doesn't. And it's like, yeah. who, who gets buckets, dog? Who makes plays? Now, yeah, you can do all, you can do fifty seven moves, dog, and score two points. By the time you scored, I didn't went down three times. I got sixty or two. Mm -hmm. There's too much energy to score. <laughs> That's what you exerting too much energy to get a fucking regular ass bucket, dog. <laughs> two points is two points. Two points yeah. was an NBA player. Y'all ain't gonna like that. Y'all gonna pull your gotchas. That nigga was spitting. And we've been critical of Gilbert's takes in the past, but it's kind of just true. And I honestly would even argue that, yo, you ain't all that for real. If you have to do the most to score points, if you have to, if there's a guy that can run down the court, boom, every time. And then there's a guy that, hey, you got to bleed 20 into the shot clock and break down a bad matchup for him to score. I'm taking the motherfucker that, hey, just. Just give him the ball, let him dunk on people. So um ultimately, yeah, I, I agree. I think I think he was spitting now. Is it ironic coming from him potentially? Sure. We can we can laugh, whatever, but I think he wasn't wrong. I think it was KG that said um like a lot of players today just have a lot of wasted dribbles. Like, oh, when, yeah. when they try to score, you do not have to dribble the ball five times against him. Yeah, like yeah. He he doesn't need the all right. Give me the left side. Like, bro, give you one, two dribbles. You're a supreme athlete. Raise up. That might be all you need. I ain't going to lie. And if it's not open, pass it out. Like, I understand, like, a lot of people have been critical of, like, Michael Jordan's play lately. But when me and Sage was watching him, bro, every single move was three dribbles or less. And he would just raise up, drain that bitch, move on. Y'all yeah, would have loved it, funny enough. Y'all fans of three dribbles one-on-ones? That nigga, boy. The reason it was... Three dribbles and pull up because that nigga three dribbles was into a paint with seven niggas in it. Like you had to, you had to pull up. I get it. It was a, it was a style of play thing. Now with more space, you have more freedom to do more shit with the ball. Like if AI was here now, that nigga would be that left to right. Would that nigga would stay spamming it? Nigga, left to right, come back. Left to right, come back. Like he, he got all the space to do it. There's no need to actually pull up now after three dribbles because you got so much space. I get what y'all mean though. Like I'm not. Definitely yeah, not mad at it. It's ironic. They can do it. Yeah. It's definitely ironic coming from Gil talking about the bag thing, seeing how LeBron also – well, and I'm not saying Gil was addressing LeBron, but when LeBron was talking about one-on-one -on -one merchants, nigga, Gil, that's you. You started the one-on-one -on -one merchants. Oh, Mr. one Full flat Like, you are the epitome of half the shit LeBron was upset about. Yes, he did touch on the bag thing, but he also talked about the lack in doing everything in the game of basketball, the lack of being prepared – to play to to play the game of basketball, not just try to get a bucket, because the game is more than just trying to get a bucket. When it's time to take you out the game because you're just scoring, what is everybody else going to do? And that was, I mean, that was the difference between a guy like Gill and other great players. I don't know if we want to bring it up, Omar, but I think below that clip, there's a clip of Gill talking about bag Kevin Durant and his bag and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah, I was looking at LeBron highlights. My God, that boy is good in Miami. Yeah. Yeah, I like I said, man. He ain't got the he ain't got the post game of later on, but LeBron. No, I always, I think, he had a bag. Was kinda... I always think he had a bag. Yeah, he always. I think Kevin Durant. KD. Okay. Mm. Like probably Kevin. Like it's. I think because it's it becomes so simple for him that we don't really get to see right. everything he has because it's like I can just pull up to. Like everybody doesn't realize he's a sharpshooter. But he only takes two threes a game, mm -hmm. right? If he took 10 threes a game, you know, that'd be a whole different story. But, you know, like when it comes to just that overall 
the double, he got that double cross, that long cross. <laughs> he has some, he has some things with him. Kyrie Irving. Kyrie Irving. Yeah. Kyrie, oh, Kyrie, Kyrie Irving. I was hoping somebody. Irving. Kyrie Irving. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's, 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 that's like ob- the most that's obvious, obvious choice. Uh, uh, Kyrie, Kyrie, I'm sure. Yeah. Is this the same clip? What? Is this the same clip as the other clip? <laughs> no, because I just noticed Lexi is here and she was in the other clip. Mm. Oh, no, it's a different nah, clip. They got different shirts on different day. Lexi is there. Or did he just take his jacket off for the second clip? <laughs> <laughs> Just got hot. Later. Yeah, it's the same shirt. They, they reused it. To the- <laughs> <laughs> that, that second clip actually happened first, <laughs> and then later on. <laughs> Do you have a collar on? No, no, no. That's a t-shirt. I mean, I guess you can identify. At the end of the day, that shit don't matter. B- basketball is played in a specific way. The people that win the most consistently are it. I, I do agree with Damo. Creation of all this space has made it to where people think that you got to do all this. But, like, although he does dribble it a lot, like, I think Luka probably, well, he does, uh, finishing. But as far as, like, dribble moves, he doesn't have the most complex bag to me. Um, trying to get them hips to start flipping by just literally switching you left to right and watch you just open up, and then I'm just going to take advantage of that. He can make moves out of it, but it's just, I don't know. When I think of bad guys, for real, for real, I do think, I mean, I had Jamal Crawford on my on the Hawks at one point. So I think of that. I think of Joe Johnson. I think of and I just don't see a place in a space for like, you know, Jamal Crawford. <laughs> but I mean, literally, like, unless you count the standstill dribbles, like a, a lot of elite scorers, again, they don't they don't take that many moves to to get into their bag, bro. Like I was watching SGA tape the other day. Once he gets into his move, everything is like three three moves or less, three four moves or less. That's what we played him yeah. three four dribbles. Dama used to be good at three dribbles, Max. Yeah, not out the not out the post, but like. You know, like genuinely, like being able to just three dribbles get to my spot, cool little pull up, shit like that. Yeah, mm, yeah. two dribbles yeah. in, then use my last four step back. Yeah, I, 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 I had some go to moves. Definitely wasn't a deep back, but I had I had three moves I can go to. I could never um, shoot off the dribble, so it was always I'm I'm getting to that basket and them three dribbles. I ain't gonna lie. I couldn't for the longest I, until I got my um shooting coach. Like I ain't gonna lie, until my dad paid for an actual shooting coach for me. My bag was horrible, nigga. I had to go to the post. But once I got me a shooting coach, my work. <laughs> um, I want to talk about a friend of the show, family of the show, and I'm glad we waited because the more the news comes out on him, boy, I it is actually outrageous. Uh-oh. By now, I'm pretty sure y'all have heard about the Jante Porter discourse. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And even more? <laughs> Oh, no, when when so when we had the opportunity because I was like you know we should probably record a clip on playback but I am actually super glad that we let it um, play out the way that we let it play out. So John T. Porter is a player for the Toronto Raptors or I probably should say former player for the Toronto Raptors. Um, Michael Porter Jr.'s brother, his brother, um, you know was getting them bets off. So he was betting on player props and he was telling people, you know, bet on these different player props. Um, And you would think that he would tell people to bet on different people, but John Tate Porter was telling people to bet on his own player prop. Woj reports, Toronto Raptors center, John Tate Porter is out of the lineup and a subject of an NBA investigation into irregularities on on prop betting involving him. Apparently, as the story goes, Jante Porter would tell a bunch of people in a Discord, his friends and stuff like that, hey, put money on my under for threes. Hey, put money on my under for assists. Hey, put money on my under for X, Y, and Z. And so what would happen is Jante Porter would then check himself into games and about four minutes into the games, he would fake an injury. Routinely? I thought it was just that one time. It was two times, and he was going to do a third time. What's wrong with this dude? A Discord? Uh, <laughs> yes. At issue are prop bets uh, involving Porter uh, from games January 26th and March 20th. Those are reports. The NBA did not immediately respond to the requests. Uh, more reporting on it. Uh, per ESPN's day permit, at least... 
One other U.S. sports book detected unusual betting interest on Porter props in games in question. A sports book industry source told ESPN that multiple betting accounts attempted to bet large amounts, upwards of 10K and 20K on Porter unders in January game against the uh, uh, Clippers. <laughs> For context, Ooh, like a talent. I'm sorry. For context, betting limits on NBA player props vary by sports book and customers, but are typically around one thousand to two thousand dollars. People were trying to do whatever they could to bet on John Tay Porter props against the Clippers. Um, the source said, and then just a few days ago, did the same thing. We had a bunch of people trying to bet the under for more. Now Damo is asking who would do this, but this is why I'm glad. Uh, we had to wait because this are, these are pictures of him in uh, his Discord. Not the oh, not in 4K. No, but we say at everyone. Um, <laughs> no way. At Ghost Liquid, Yo Tay, what's up with the trade offer? At Tay Trades Eleven, I'll call Leon Rose right now. Say the word. Um, this deleted user says, Tay is Jante Porter, LOL. At Tay Trades, please dunk on uh, Beverly next game versus the Clippers. Um, boy, let me see. Let me scroll back out. Bro, okay, this is in? crazy. I didn't know this. Where's uh, the incriminating part, though? That's oh. big brain talking and da-da-da-da. Tay Trades, LOL. Yeah, I don't really chat much. Just pop in when I have some free time. Um, though, if you guys ping me with cues, I'll try to make it to a chat to answer them. Uh, what's Tay's name? Jonte Porter. I found it because they didn't know that he was the player. So they're asking who it was mm -hmm. to, to figure out. And they're watching the game in there. Someone put the Grizzlies head coach on speed dial and tell him to put Tay in. Um, hashtag Tay trades. Thanks for the heads up this morning. Now, this is on some stocks. This is some stocks. This is some stocks. This okay. is some stocks. I want to be clear. Mm -hmm. But this is the Discord right here where DeJounte Porter is, you know, handling his business. This is the page. Freedom Through Trading. Oh, uh, DeJounte Porter is a co-founder. So he had it featured partners, Michael Porter Jr. He was running it as if it was a um, stock trading platform. Mm -hmm. Oh no. And so then once you got into the Discord, that's where he got off, you know, the the real shits. The 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 uh this dude is JTR, bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Stop. That, yeah. that's, where, that's where he got off the trades and putting your uh uh putting your slips and stuff like that. This was casual taking uh uh yeah, take king. Uh, he wagered eighty thousand dollars to pay one point one two million, under eight and a half Jonte Porter points, under four and a half Jonte Porter assists, and under one and a half Jonte Porter three pointers made. Just make it more sus, bro. You can Let's do put... this without faking an injury. Like all those things could have happened without faking. It. You could have literally got less than five points without faking injury. You could have took. Less than two threes without faking it, or made less than two threes without you need to take a fucking three. Like I don't get it. Yeah, he just made it the most sus thing as he could, bro. Like a, uh, I'm gonna just respectfully random role player. <laughs> Let's just everyone just bet thirty thousand dollars on this dude. I think it would have been less sus if it was I don't know Steph Curry, Kevin Durant, but just random role player. $40,000. Hmm, I wonder what's going on over here. Nothing fishy going on over here. Like, what are we doing, bruh? L method. L method, bro. Is it an L method, though? If you know there's a role player who's not getting shined and you can get easy money, that's not L method. L execution. Why are you faking these weak-ass eye injuries four minutes into the game both times? That's what sold it. If you would have just played those games regularly and just, I don't, I don't want to say made it look normal, but just went there and played basketball, what the fuck they gonna do? Get mad that niggas is putting money on you and you not produce? You're not doing it on purpose, nigga. You suck. You're John no, that's Tay part Porter. of the method. That's what I'm saying. That's part of the method, bro. You didn't have to fake it. It has been what asked. You? Thank you. Just be John Tay Porter, nigga. Like, are you even <laughs> averaging five points this year? Like, like let's be real. Like, what are we doing? You could have just been yourself genuinely 
and niggas would have still won their money. Before before Sage goes, this is again from Casual Take King. That's crazy, dick so. <laughs> Um, For more than half that year, 2022, Jante was averaging about two million dollars a month wagered. Uh, and FanDuel never attempted to source of funds or perform advanced KYC due diligence on him, even though it would have been quite evident where those funds were being channeled from. Because he wasn't in the league, he was allowed to wager freely on the NBA, and we had several instances of similar unusual and inconsistent wagering trends on MPJ unders in games around that time as well. But it was much tougher to trace back given his level of role with the Nuggets versus Jante here in this case. Instead of reporting, flagging, or escalating to NBA League officials, FanDuel showered him with the usual VIP treatment of gifts, comp travel, tickets, bonus, bonuses, and other amenities. This is <laughs> Hall of Fame. Hall of Fame, stupid nigga. Uh, this is... You're dumb. Um, for, first things first, I've never seen a bag fumble like this. You have an NBA contract, and you don't even play a significant amount. And you know that's fine. Some people are in the NBA to make money. Hell, you clearly were. The idea that you couldn't just run the racks up in a unique way, in a different way, maybe just been a locker room guy, whatever you can, to keep getting these, I don't know, million-dollar contracts is... um inspirational at this point because now i know no matter how stupid i can be I, I don't fall on my face like this um also and i know i know domo disagrees with souls i don't look man if we're gonna bet on the games here's a thought how about instead of 80 bands just about eight because it's believable it's believable that a motherfucker can be like oh yeah john say porter that nigga suck in fact that's how bad john say porter is for sure I agree. I hell, I even agree with Dom O there that I've I've been in those parties where a random role player we see his line we're like, wait, this nigga's awful. <laughs> Under on everything we've done, we've done that before. Cowboy fans have done that. I've I've heard these things, so I know they exist. But when we're talking about eighty bands, nigga, on one one mysterious night, and then someone one else has. 60 bands on this one mysterious night. So you telling me Aubrey Graham and um J. Cole after just a first person shooter. <laughs> Fuck John Tay real quick. <laughs> Biggest to what? Like nigga, nigga, who who the fuck made these bets, bro? Who who the fuck made these bets? So off rip, it already seems crazy. Then obviously the injury execution. Dog, this is the dumbest bag from I've ever seen. It also on a completely unrelated, but not really note. It does eliminate the idea that these guys are in it for the love of the game. This nigga was here to run up a check. And my God, had you just, you know, been honest about the shit, you probably would have got multiple contracts. There's one thing about the new era of basketball is even if you ask, as long as you're not under the, over the age of 26, you're getting paid. Someone wants you. So it, it's it's crazy, but whatever. I just, I just want to say, um, first and foremost, I said it when the uh, Bruce, and, and, and also, and this is going to be nasty, but it's also because I don't like Michael Porter Jr. Um, he has another brother, and I just Googled it, that's why. He has a whole basketball playing family, two sisters. One one is going to college uh, like this year and next year. Um, you know, one that played in Missouri and all that stuff like that. This brother, Jante. He has another brother that played college basketball, but... Uh, this brother killed somebody, vehicular homicide, in a DUI crash. Real ESPN with that one, huh? That's very. Ladies and gentlemen. Very ESPN the way that I did that. Him. Yeah, his brother killed somebody. Former University of Denver player. Um, I think Michael Porter Jr. helped all of them too because he might be the oldest. These people, your family just will squander the opportunity, boy, if you just put them on. It is insane. Uh, I said this with the Bruce thing. I can routinely said this. Stop putting stuff in Discord. At yeah. Tay Porter. Stop. Go ahead. Stop putting stuff in Discord. At Omizi Hoops. At Omizi Loves Ball. I'm just saying. If I was to do a Discord where I rig some shit up, 
I wouldn't have it as Omar G knows ball 96. Come on. I'm smart. <laughs> like, <laughs> please. Bro. <laughs> come, come on, bro. Yeah. Bro, nothing is truly private on the internet. I think people need to understand that, even though it's a private Discord that you need to pay in. Once you get in there, <laughs> click that power button, click that up walking button, and boom, I can tweet that bitch out wherever I want to. All right? Even what? on Windows, Windows S, whatever the fuck that key is, bro, that shit is not private. To me, the only thing, the only time things are really private nowadays, bro, is when I'm talking to you in person, no cameras, no nothing. That's it. That's it. We, we have got to stop doing that. I want to say what makes this so silly is because we are, we are actually making progress to making fantasy sports betting, uh, sports gambling, any any sort of money-related gambling thing in sports. We're, we're close to really getting to another uh, breakthrough. This only comes after, I think it was earlier this month, where the NBA released that they were going to be in connection with FanDuel or Prize or whoever – to say, yo, we're going to do some live betting on the sides of games when you have League Pass, which is cool. Like, you know, getting more people into sports, all this stuff like that. But stuff like this ruins it for everybody. Stuff like what Shohei Otani and his translator are going through right now ruins it for everybody. These are major players. One side on the NBA, sure, he's not a major player, but it literally looks like you're rigging up games. That's a major, that's a major mess up. And then for the Shohei incident, come on, bro. You're the biggest player in baseball, honestly, from a talent perspective ever. But, like, you're the biggest name in baseball in so long. So long. You are here to save baseball. You can't get caught up. Come on, dog. That, that's insane. I don't know if y'all saw, but the NCAA is trying to uh, – this is, this is like this week as well. They're trying to get it to where across all the states in America, they outlaw prop bets on uh, college basketball players. Because mm -hmm. they had they they've had point shaving incidents throughout time in college basketball. I think they just want to avoid it because you know sports betting is becoming more of a bigger thing, and they wouldn't have too much of a case. You know, people would say this and a third nil blah, blah, blah. They would say that if Jonte Porter's dumbass wasn't going out here. Under Tay Porter 11 in a Discord telling people, yeah, the under looks like a lock. On The under looks like a lock on Jean Tay Porter. And then somebody in the thing says, yeah, thanks, Tay. We really owe you one. Who is, who is Tay Porter? He's a mystery in here. And you have some dumbass mod, <laughs> LOL. Tay Porter is Jean Tay Porter from the, from the Toronto Raptors. LOL. Come on, bro. Come yeah, on. I was, I was gonna uh, save that for my second point. Um, the guy that sent the screenshot, yo, you're you, everyone involved is stupid. But they always <laughs> do, don't they always yeah, send the screenshot? Yeah, it's like, ooh, so thanks for the heads up is so so crazy, bro. Like that'd be if if I were doing this, if I had to be Daffy Porter here, right? The first thing I'm doing is be like, hey, no matter what. Don't send me a thank you. Don't send me screenshots of how much you got paid. Just say your parlay on whatever other shit hit. Go for it. But leave the plays involving me out of it. It would have been the one rule. It would have been a bannable offense. It would have been an insta ban. Niggas is out there a key keying it up, bro. Oof. Man, fuck that dumb. shit. If I'm, if I'm doing this... Off rip that entry level where everybody talking. We which which one is Tay? Uh, that level you niggas ain't getting no information out of me. Nope. Y'all not getting shit. I'm throwing casual props Dunk in there. Pat bro. Bev, you out of here. Yeah, <laughs> I, I'm throwing. I am throwing the most casual sheets out there. Take the over on Westbrook turnovers. Yeah, like I'm throwing the casual shit out there. You got to pay the super duper interest fee to get you to get the props on me betting on myself and getting money, getting niggas to get money off me. What? You got to be a super premium Hall of Fame member to get the, oh, put the under on my shots that I'm purposely not going to fucking take. What? What are we talking about? Niggas ain't even running the operation right. This is crazy. Yeah, everyone involves an idiot. Again, I now know as stupid as I can be. 
and as stupid as I've been in the past, that there's someone out there that's genuinely dumber. And that makes me feel good. And on top of that, there's no way. This is a very dumb situation in general. There's there's no way in the world. It's so bad. Let me say this. Let me say this. Let me say this. <laughs> so the people saying he squandered away his millions from the NBA contract, that is true. But let's be real. A lot of NBA players should come to that realization that they're not going to last that long and that NBA money isn't going to last long. So I do understand the, him feeling the need to make the most out of it and do something extra like to get money. Now, I don't think that winning niggas $1.2 million on bets on you and not charging a cut. Like, I didn't hear nothing about a cut. He getting out of that. Nothing. So, making niggas free money already seems like a bad bet. I thought he was betting on himself or sending niggas money to bet on him that he can break bread with them. Like, I thought you doing that. You just winning niggas what money is shit. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah, like you Discord niggas is who you putting on? On this? Discord niggas, a bunch of reefies, crazy. But but that but that <laughs> but that's another part of it, and that's the last thing I'm gonna say. Even if it was just the stocks and financial part of it, like he was doing that. Even the way he was doing that was raggedy. He did that like somebody I went to high school with. Yo, let's start up a Discord. Uh, I got people who can give you stock tips, trading tips, and if you invite three people, he did a very pyramid scheme. Invite three people, we'll give you your membership for free, et cetera, et cetera. You are a professional athlete. You play college basketball for X amount of years. Your family plays college ba- has played college basketball for the X amount of years. Your daddy was the coach. Your brother is Michael Porter Jr. I would think that if you were wanting to give stock tips or financial advice, whatever the case to people, there is a more legitimate way than saying, yo, I got a Discord stock tips. That That just seems so sketchy and somebody would probably – looking to you for some sort of fraud. It's so easy to do that because there's no regulations in there. Tay Porter 11. Oh, yeah, look, man, he ain't going he ain't gonna to see this because you better not be on there. You better be lowering up, buddy. You better not be on the fucking YouTube. But I say this, man. I, I, we've all been real harsh on him. He young. He made a young nigga mistake. I mean, we're around his age, but we young niggas. He made a young nigga mistake. Going forth, um, dog, whatever endeavors, because it probably won't be with the NBA, whatever endeavors you pursue in terms of making money, dog, if you're going to be despicable, think these things through, please. And don't trust the internet, dog. It's like the last thing that I'm trusting. There's been several moments in our Discord when niggas be asking me personal ass questions. Bro, come on, say this is just us. Yeah. Exactly why I'm not saying that shit. What's wrong <laughs> with you? Like it is yeah, you, you right. It is you, nigga. Like, no, bro. What are we doing, bro? And hey, God, God bless here. the family. Cause um I seen I like the story Omar pulled up and stuff. Hopefully everybody does better, thinks better, moves smarter in the future. But God, that that was painfully stupid. I know we was harsh on him, but that was just so I actually feel bad for him because that was so dumb, bro. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Got to get into the mommy news. A deal only a real winner can get. <laughs> He's on fire. Uh, Caitlin Clark gets Blockbuster $5 million offer from Ice Cube's Big Three League. $5 million yes. offer from Ice Cube's Big Three League. I ran the numbers on that. That w- it, the, the offer is for... 10 games, up to 10 games, eight regular season, and two playoff games, right? So a potential of, you know, 10 games. Uh, That would put her at a Stephen Curry rate, roughly. Steph Curry makes about 500 and something thousand dollars a game. She would be making $500,000 a game. That is a Stephen Curry rate per game. This is from Ice Cube. We intended the offer to remain private while Caitlin plays for the championship, but I won't deny what's now already out there. Big Three made a historic offer to Caitlin Clark. Why wouldn't we? Caitlin is a generational athlete who can achieve tremendous success in the Big Three. Let's keep reading on. Uh, 
The skeptics laugh when we made Nancy Lieberman the first female coach of a men's pro team, and she won the championship of her first year. Then Lisa Leslie won it all in year two with our offer. Caitlin Clark can make history and break down even more barriers for female or for women athletes. America's women athletes should not be forced to spend their off seasons playing in often dismal and dubious foreign countries. Damn. Fuck Croatia, huh? Just to make ends meet. Um, and they should have more than just one professional option in the U.S. at a time when American pro sports leagues are being infiltrated by. Okay. I just wanted to make sure he was if it to say something crazy. Maybe it still is. Autocratic anti-women regimes such as Qatar. Our path-breaking offer to Caitlin Clark demonstrates that Big 3 now offers another choice for athletes. Now, I want y'all to know. Well, y'all go ahead. Tell me what y'all think, man. So this somehow spirals into it should have been someone else instead of Caitlin, doesn't it? There's a couple of different things. Now, I will, I'll, I'll say this. Let me, give the, let me give some full context. Apparently, from what I read earlier today, <laughs> is that Ice Cube went to a bunch of people to get this money up. He did not have this money, but he went to a bunch of advertisers, a bunch of sponsors, and they somehow came with $5 million to give uh, uh, Caitlin Clark. Now, mind you, apparently... Big interesting how they do that, like huh? 10K just... games. Yeah, this is interesting. <laughs> hey, when people can find money, man... <laughs> money is... You know, money is hey, um, <laughs> it's just everywhere, man. You just gotta know the right... People. Yeah, low key. <laughs> hey, low key. Right. People. Hey, low key. You just gotta ask. Like Facts. literally. <laughs> <laughs> niggas will give you money. Who knew? If you ask niggas for money, niggas will give it to you. I know that sounds so crazy. Privilege. I know that sounds privileged, but I'm keeping it a thousand with y'all. Just ask. <laughs> niggas got money. Yeah, like a lot of it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, keyboard it up. You know, <laughs> that's guy crazy. Keyboard it up. But, okay, go ahead. I mean, tell me y'all's thoughts on this. Um, yeah. I mean, I was just surprised with because I haven't really been keeping up with the big three at all. Well, vaguely when it pops up on my timeline, but I thought the big three was for retired NBA players and making them a league so that they can continue their playing career post the NBA. <laughs> so, them offering. Um, essentially, a, a college athlete gonna be a WNBA player. That it just kind of confused me, but I don't know. Mm. Would I take it if I was her? I don't know. Um, I'm not gonna lie with the big three. I mean, at first it was for retired, uh, former player, former pro players, retired players, and stuff like that. But I want to say as of last year, or as of recently, as the years go by, when it comes to the big three, I forget how many years they've been doing it by now. Um, they've lowered the, the age requirement and the requirement to get into the big three. So now it's not just about being a retired player. It's, I guess, three years removed from the league. So it's a lot younger players there now. Um, Isaiah Briscoe was playing in the big three last year, I think. I want to say uh, Kyrie's cousin. Uh, that dude was popping like crazy in the mid-2010s, early – I want to say early 2010s, maybe even. Or Quentin Richardson. Why he doing all like, that shit? Yeah, Why? like they have way younger – uh, players relative to who we were used to at first, the Catino Mobleys and Kwame Brown type niggas. Like, yeah, it is mm -hmm. younger people. So yeah. it will make sense that they do that. They, they would throw something like that out there at someone. Um, I've seen the conversations where people are saying, why not X, Y, and Z? Why would you pick her? This, that, and the third. I didn't know that this was sponsor money. I didn't know this was advertiser money. That makes it like, it makes 100% sense now. Like, at first, I wrap my head around it. I'm like, all right. I mean, in the last five years, who's the highest marketed women's basketball player? Like, who would you have had? In the, high, in the last five years, you can't really name a name bigger than Caitlin Clark for real. I mean, unless you want to say Angel Reese. That was last year. Um, as of right now, Caitlin just seems like the bigger name in terms of the market. Um, now, if this is ad dollars, this is marketing dollars, essentially, they're telling you specifically who they want. You can't be mad at Ice Cube for giving... Like niggas gave him the money to do something and gave him a direction to go, he went in that direction. I'm not, I'm not upset at that personally. Uh, I feel like this opens the door for other women. Um, I see someone on, on, on the timeline saying Juju, nigga, she was a freshman. She has two more years, she really three more, two more years before she even can go pro legally, technically or whatever, unless it's a new opportunity. But 
this just opens the door. And if Caitlyn goes over there and busts ass, she go over there and busts a bunch of old niggas' ass. Nigga, everybody can go over there and the floodgates are open. Everybody can get a deal first. But somebody got to break the uh, barrier. I mean, I'm not upset that it's having to be her. Yeah, I'm not upset at all. Let me be clear about my um, initial uh, prediction on where this news goes. <clears throat> God damn. I had to cough, but I didn't even do that for real. Um, nah, yeah, I'm not upset at all about it being Caitlyn. I mean, Don was being nice with it, dog. I don't think Angel it was in the conversation, and even in terms of motion, as great as I believe Angel Reese will be in terms of women's basketball. It's just Caitlin Clark. She's just the girl right now. It just it. She she's she's her. It is what it is. And especially with sponsorship dollars, mm-hmm. that's that's who they're that's who they're looking for. That's the easiest name. That if I had to invest, I don't know, five million dollars in somebody succeeding, it'd be Caitlin Clark. So. I'm not mad at it at all. I don't even have too much to say. I mean, it's not like I watch the most college uh, hoops in general, let alone college women hoops. But, um, yeah. I'm proud well, of it. Proud let of me it. take over because I know what Bobby wants to do. Listen, um, I don't I, – I hear the conversations about getting all the other people in there, blah. Don't don't really care. They're not her. They're not hermity. They're not hermity like my good sis. Stop bringing up people that still have eligibility. This isn't how that works. Um, you know, you can do the NIL. I think to me, now there's going to be a conflict. Let me also mention this. The U.S. women's national team uh, is apparently going to be playing at the same exact time as the big three will be going on. So she would have to make the decision, do I go play with the team and, you know, the Olympics and all this other stuff? Or do I go to the big three? Because uh, this is also another day where they announced Caitlin Clark uh, being – the only college player that's going to be on that U S women's national team. They did that today as well, too. Um, you know, listen, she's the golden goose. I, I understand some of the racial dynamics. I'm not here to focus on that. Cause one, I like the player. So maybe I can't see past some of that. I do understand the politics behind it. Um, that, that just kind of is the way it is right now. Not saying that it's right. Not saying that it's wrong. It's just the way it is. That girl can hoop to me. So it is what it is. My biggest thing in all this is I told y'all not too long ago that there is a problem with the NBA. There is a problem with the NBA. And I'm saying that because the NBA exists as the parent company for the WNBA. If Ice Cube can go get $5 million for her, you can't tell me that they can't go and get an astronomical amount of money and things for the WNBA. I looked at some of the statistics and reporting for, you know, what the WNBA brought in last year. And that's something for a longer solo stream. So I won't bore you with that here. But he was able to go get five. Like, me and B-Souls were on a call today, man. Money is out there. You can go get it. And I don't even think we have the same contacts as other people do. So mm-hmm. I, I think that if, if these entities wanted funding, if, you know, all these things like that, yo, you could go get it. It can be done two times over. You feel what I'm saying? He did that. I don't know how long it took him to do that, but let's just say it took him the, the from the last season to the next season. In a year, he raised five million dollars for one for one player for ten games. You telling me the entity that is the NBA can't raise that for? The WNBA, or at least let the let let things be. Hey, you handle it yourself, and then they can't do it. It's a deeper conversation. And if you also thought that these players and the NIL deals and they'll make less money in college and all that stuff like that, you're stupid, dog. With more time, effort, and energy, the money is out there. They can go get that money if they want to. I saw a, a long conversation. Uh, it was a podcast with a couple of players. And they went into it. Aaliyah Boston, Paige, Sue Bird, and uh, what was that? Was that NECA? I think it was NECA. But nonetheless, yeah, the money is out there, dog. It is out there. Good good on Caitlin. Uh, good on Cube for showing that it's possible. Um, she probably shouldn't do it. And she should probably represent the country. That's just me. Our uh, money ain't good money. If this is going to divide a bu- I think that this decision would divide a bunch of people. So... Yeah, that's my biggest concern with this is if she does go and she does not bust some ass and she gets her ass busted, 
There's gonna be some nasty conversations. Even Very if she, nasty bust, conversations. I think even if she busts ass, it's not gonna make her look. Well, you know, I'm just saying that because some other people. I know Lexi Brown. Lexi Brown talked about it on Gil's podcast, and I wanna, I can, I can bring that up. Uh, but I, I don't know how people are dealing with this attention. You know what I'm saying? When the young person comes in, and they have all this attention and stuff like that. How are, how are other people looking at her? What do you mean? Um, people be hating. You the young gun. You pull it. You you, you got surpass. She, I think at this point, surpassing like Wimby level expectations. This is this is absolutely um, nuts. So this is this is from Lexi Brown, current LA Sparks guard. I think I think Lexi plays for the Sparks. Um. Oh shit! Wrong thing. Wrong thing. My my bad. My, 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 my bad. If you open the article and you see what he said was his reasoning, he wanted to provide more opportunities for WNBA players and provide opportunities to not go overseas. So you offered the contract to a player who's not yet even in the WNBA. Mm. Big three does not happen during overseas season. So that, that doesn't make sense. That's true. And then... Um, you pretty much offended all of the European countries that open their doors to us, give us a lot of money, a lot of love, and a lot of experience by calling them dismal and dubious. And there are some very beautiful countries that we have the opportunity to go play in. So, I mean, if you're going to say that it's for that, then stand on that. But I don't think it's, I think he's trying to make a business decision, which he's a businessman that makes sense. But to mask it in this, I want to uplift and support WNBA players and women athletes is kind of a cop out, I think. And I don't think it really makes any sense. And there's some truth to that because some some WNBA players have actually started a league uh, this, this past offseason. It's actually running right now. But they've started a league separate of the WNBA to keep people in shape and do different things like that. Um, oh, look at O'Shea Dick, Sub Jackson. So I don't. I'm, Lexi, Lexi has some points there. Maybe in a in a real utopian society, um, Ice Cube could have helped their new league get sponsorships and bring in five million dollars and all these different things like that. But at the end of the day, there there could be some hate in that. There could very much be some hate in her criticism, and people are definitely gonna say, you know, it was oh, it was directed at Ice Cube, but it could be some hate towards Caitlin Clark, and she's gonna come into a league like that. And that is, mm, that's scary to come yeah. into a league where everybody's yeah. hating. Yeah. I feel like, but I mean, she was doing a massive amount of dick riding as well. Um, To say, oh, how is this keeping us from going overseas? Well, if you motherfuckers is getting $5 million, I guarantee you're not going over fucking seas to play basketball for the, for the all season. Keep your ass home. Like that, that would keep you from going overseas. It's not about it happening during the season. It's giving you enough money to not have to take that as an option. Now, the other shit she was speaking on, I mean, I ain't gonna lie, she was spitting. But <clears throat> the only pushback I would have is yes, if you're trying to make opportunities for WNBA players, it would be the best look for the opportunity to be given to a WNBA player. But if it's sponsor dollars, it's sponsor dollars. And if them niggas specifically, now Q Lion and that nigga pushed Caitlin Clark, and then niggas was like, all right, bet, cool. And he just did that, then we can have a conversation. But if they had a list of names and Caitlin Clark was the one that sold, and that's who the sponsors wanted to go with for him to get this money, then that's just how the cookie crumbles. I, again, I don't yeah. think there's much you can do here, but I will say I don't think she knew the full context of where the money came from, I would assume. But if she did know, then, I mean, hey, me and her just disagree. Yeah, brand deals, at the end of the day, the main objective is to get eyes on whatever it is. And um, if, if it's not Caitlin Clark, it, it just has to be someone that sells more than her. And I'm not going to lie, over the last two years, there is no bigger college athlete than Caitlin Clark. I feel like, at least. Is there a bigger one in terms of just popularity? Um, unless she goes to the football sphere, Caleb Williams potentially. But in terms of, um, yeah, nah. Yeah, so in terms of the bottom line of that brand deal, yeah, Caitlin Clark is the you, figure. You'd have to argue Caleb Williams. It would just be a bad business move to give that $5 million to anyone else. That's it. No, they were saying that it could have potentially been bust down. Cause you got five million, you make give, one, give one, give one, give one, give two. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, it's it's Caitlyn. I, I was really thinking about it. I was like, is it Caitlyn? Caitlyn, it's Caitlyn. Probably Caitlyn. Um, let's, 
Let's end on a couple things. Some Lakers slander and then oh, man. some Draymond right. Green hate. Lakers I don't... Slander. So, you know, we're back on Draymond. We're back on Draymond. I don't know what his problem is. Um, it's, you know, I, I don't even want to say it's out of pocket because it's been out of the pocket so long ago. That this is the pocket type. At, <laughs> you know, maybe we <laughs> into the new pocket or whatever the kid like I I literally do not know what is wrong with Draymond Green um at this point. First it was the foul. He had some foul issues. He just recently got ejected. Uh then he got into a spat with Tari Eason. He got into a spat with Tari Eason who's not even playing, right? No nah. Tari, Tari Eason's not even playing. Yeah, I think Tari put up an Instagram post, Warriors, where are you, type shit. Draymond saw that. And and decided to respond on his podcast, um, calling him, you know, bitch-ass white boy, as Ernie would say. Um, then he had another choke the other day. Did you see the other the other choke on Patty Mills? That will be reviewed to see if it's going to be a flagrant foul. Look at this. Damn. <laughs> oh, my God. There, there's that after movement flop I be talking about. Oh, didn't mean it. Oh, right after. A little too coordinated for these, man. It's, it's a flop within a flop, bro. Like, god damn. And 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 I want to hear because this is about his ejection in the Warriors at a game. I got ejected four minutes into the game. Just can't do it. Uh, regardless of what was said, I'm not about to get into what was said because that's irrelevant to Steph's point. I, I have to be on the floor. and Whatever that means, you just have to do that. Uh, I look at this. I'm not overreacting to this because of everything that happened in the beginning of the season. You know, I feel like since I've returned, everything's headed in the right direction and hit a little bump in the road, get over it and keep going. I said what I said, I deserve to get kicked out at that point. If I'm all the way honest with y'all, I kind of was trying to turn my body and angle and go to the bench. And I said what I said, like a little too soon before angling my body to the bench. Um, Look but at yeah, you. it just can't happen. Like we, we need to win games. So like I said, um, not going to overreact like, oh man, like, Stuff is. Stuff is never as good as it seems. It's never as bad as it seems. Like, I know where I am. I understand what I'm doing moving forward. And in my position, just make sure that's the exception and not the rule. I got ejected. Steph looks so fucking hurt in that clip. Um, but that's not... Because, I mean, we can sit here and talk about Draymond choking people and all that stuff. <laughs> I'm tired of the conversation, to be quite honest with you. We need Jack, is a no super villain. He's mega mind. Oh. Um, but Jay Williams had this interesting take. I'm getting texts from people that I really value their decision, right? High level people. And what these texts are reading is, well, how about the leadership of Stephen Curry? That's where these conversations are going. And in my brain, right, processing information, Molly. Wait, what I start, do you mean? How about the leadership of Stephen I'm Curry? They're calling the, Steph out? Yes. Oh. Right? For him not controlling Draymond. So in my in, in the way I process this, Steph, it's because I know Steph. I spent time around Steph. We were talking about this during Get Up. We wish we could have a camcorder in, in Steph's car, right? Yeah. We, like yeah. all the things that Steph would be right. saying right. to his wife and right. how he's frustrated about because he's one of the most competitive dudes you ever meet. No doubt. Raymond Green is diminishing the ultimate legacy of how people are looking at the leadership of Stephen Curry. That's what's happening I will, right now. The only thing I will say, Jay, I think that's in a a group of people. I agree. I don't think that's like a universal mentality, right, is to think about Steph. And where are you in this, Steph, at all? I do think... Damo looks like he's ready to take off on Jay Williams. That goes to show that if Kobe and Jordan played in today's era, you niggas would hate him and criticize him because Jordan played with fucking Dennis Rodman and it was praised for man, the mental fortitude to be able to deal with a character like Dennis Robin and lock in when it's time to lock in. Now it's, oh, this nigga spazzes out. Oh, niggas is horrible. You can't control that guy. It's another grown ass man. What do you mean control him? Do you see Steph? What the fuck are we talking about? You think Steph is about to control Draymond? No. Draymond ain't been being controlled since ever. And that's what made him so great. The fact that he wasn't controlled. Now we're trying to reign. Like, that's so dumb. 
we're, we're taking and who are these people? I hate when these niggas do this. People that are really high up. And then your cousin is not someone high up, Jay Williams. Like, stop. I, I'm so sick of you niggas lying. Jesus Christ. Now, what if he told you that was Danny Ainge? No. What, what if he said it was, oh, never mind. I was going to say, like, Rob Palenka. Yeah, Rob well, Palenka. Like, what, what if? It ain't going to go well. Then my question contacts. would be. Then my question would be, why the fuck is Rob Polinka texting Jay Williams about Draymond Green? What the fuck are we doing? Like, There's what? a level of boredom. <laughs> then I'm going to start going in on the Lakers. See, this is why we are a fucking seven seed. Okay, that, <laughs> that's like wrong shit. So worried about Draymond, <laughs> Draymond Green, Green and Tattle telling him to Jay Williams? All what? Right. what? Uh, you got uh, pillow talking about Draymond Green? Nah, pillow talks about Draymond is <laughs> insane. Yeah, like uh, voice messages too. I'm ready to be nasty. I'm supposed to be a leader. Look, Steph ain't the leader. Okay, we can have a conversation about Steph being the leader all we want. Not off of this one. All right, look. I understand. I even remember um, a while back when we asked on here uh, it was it was Omar the leader of Keep It A Buck, and I was like, hey, I'm a grown man or whatever. I understand that a lot of people view can view that as corny, and a lot of people can view that as facts or whatever, right? Look, leader... For sure, go for it. Control is <laughs> great. Hey, look, hey, look. I'ma tell you niggas. Na- nobody's controlling anything. <laughs> Let me be clear. Control yeah. is insane. What? What is he? His pet? Like, what? What are we talking about, bro? Now, I can. Un- now, I understand where they're at least trying to come from, in the sense of like, damn, we can't. We can't have a level of respect for said player to the point where it's like, yo, for you, my friend, I'm going to not close line Patrick Mills or something like that. Sure. But I mean, what what do you want him to do? Tase Draymond in practice or some shit? If that respect isn't there or anything like that, because I think if it's a if it's a level of respect, Curry's earned it. Um, I, I'm honestly not like I'm obviously not honestly. And not in the locker room, so I don't know if they've never talked about it, but considering exactly what Draymond has mentioned about Curry telling him he needs to be on the court, they clearly have talked about it on more than one occasion, it seems. So I I, I don't know about control. I think this is a, another one of those things where um, the NBA media is trying to, you know, get their shit off and push their agenda at the cost of, like, actual discourse. Probably was slow news day, to be honest with you. I think, um, yeah, control is a crazy verbiage, but uh, I will give some pushback because, you know, we're a team here. They're a team over there. We have a bottom line. They have a bottom line. And if one of us, let's just say it's me, just kept on getting canceled every fucking week, every week, it's affecting our bottom line. Right. I feel like it doesn't really matter who. If no one is checking me, telling me to shut the fuck up, like some something's something got to change. And I'm not saying Stephen Curry hasn't had that conversation with Draymond. So I can't go that far. But if that is the case, someone has to have that real... I feel like it already has because this is not something new. Someone needs to have that conversation with Draymond. Yo, you are fucking up our bottom line. And I'm not even going to go back to the things that have already transpired. 2016, Jordan Poole, and argue KD. You keep on affecting our bottom line, bro. Something needs to change. But that's my that's where I'm gonna push push back though. Because for me, if let's let's say it was you and you were out of control, out of pocket, we what we wouldn't do is necessarily like we would tell you, yo, tighten up all that stuff. But if you kept doing it, we wouldn't be then viewed as yo, the podcast that couldn't keep B souls under control. We would be viewed as the podcast that you still have B souls on the pod. What are you doing? We would like the solution would be to let yeah. you go. The solution would be to pack you up. The solution, but it wouldn't be viewed as, oh my God, you guys can't control this deranged lunatic named B souls. That wouldn't be the case. Yeah, I think I I mean, we're 30 years into the Draymond experience. Um, I'm pretty sure those conversations were had a yeah. long time ago. Uh, and sometimes somebody just is who he is. I and I hate that we mythologize all these people, you know. Uh, MJ would would have sat him down and did just stand a third, or the Zen master would have sat him down and really reached out to him, or whatever the case may be. Uh, Kobe would have mamba mentality to him, or you know, whatever, whatever the hell people used to be saying. But in reality, sometimes you run into a Draymond. Sometimes you run into a Dennis. 
Sometimes you just run into these people, right? And if they're not going to change, they're not going to change. It don't. I, I don't think it makes you any less of a leader. Like, this is the thing that I'm pointing to. This makes you any less of a leader because you couldn't get one person. Because then we would be looking at, like, I don't know, the Martin Luther Kings of the world or the the Gandhis or whoever else is of the world. I'm just naming names at this point. We'll be looking at all of them because they didn't get everybody to believe in, you know, whatever they didn't believe in. You know, and saying, like, they're not good leaders. Oh, you're not a good leader because you couldn't get this person. Wow. Well, person was a little racist, you know? So he wasn't, he wasn't not going to stop just because I came and knocked on his door. Yeah. No, I feel like the difference would be, like, if y'all just didn't say anything to me, I'd be like, uh, from my outside perspective, in, in the scenario I was bringing up, if y'all didn't say anything at all to me, I'd be like, that, that's kind of negligent on y'all for not caring about the business enough to confront me about it. I feel like, personally. You know what I'm saying? So, again, I'm not telling Steph Curry to press Draymond Green. I'm not telling him to control him or anything. But I would just hope that a conversation was had between whoever the leaders are in that locker room or on that franchise between them and Draymond Green. Well, also which gone. I feel like they already have. They already well, have them. Iggy, Iggy and them is gone. David West gone. You know, well, Draymond was one of the leaders, he himself. So, But, yeah, yeah they gone, man. That, that's That's done. Probably still is, weirdly enough. Yeah. <laughs> like, like dead ass think consulted. about it. Who I else do, Who yeah. else would you say is leading the Warriors unless you think Curry is the puppeteer of them niggas? And it wouldn't be necessarily Clay or anything. Well, Clay would have uh, seniority as well. So you could argue that those three would be the leaders of that locker room. It's a tough situation, man. Um, I think, and I think realistically, personality, personalities like a Draymond Green, for example, that's literally one of those friends where you're like, oh, that's Dre. Like, like, I'm very sure everybody has that friend. Now, maybe not to the level of what Draymond's doing to the NBA, but everybody got that one friend that extrovert 100% will say anything, will do anything. One of those people that when they say they don't give a fuck, they low-key do not. He really don't give a fuck. She really don't give a fuck. And then when you ex got to explain why X person did what they did, oh, hey, man, that's... That's that's Dre, bro. He just can't come out. <laughs> like, 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 I, I, I honestly don't know why we're cool. That, that's Dre, not man. Even, not even he just can't come out. He just can't come out when we go, you know, you put that friend in that little box. Yeah. Hey, if we're going, if we're going out to this place, yeah, I'll, I'll definitely. We've had that conversation out. on a different level about, like, would you party with some of your real-life friends if you were the level of, like, Kai or some shit? I think that was the topic. And it's like, oh, yeah. Some of them niggas, yeah, nah. Y'all want to hit up Arby's? <laughs> Hell. We can hit up Arby's. Yeah. Anywhere else? Nah, we're good. Um, let's do these hot takes and take a couple Q's and A's. I'll start it off, okay? I never really get to start things off. Um, I am a fruit casual. How this is too much of a hot take, I don't know. Uh, I'm going to get to it. I just want to play this quick video. I'm a fruit casual, I, and I've known that for a minute, but when you see stuff like this... This is the top five fruits in Costa Rica. Oh my god. <laughs> this is the biggest soursop you've ever seen in your life. You see that? It's a giant. This is a Barbie pink banana. Barbie this banana, banana is full of seed. Kapuasu. This is how I open it. Did you I don't see know that? what that is. Cracks open like that, and then you pop one of the seeds out. And then a little you, dry. Can Ain't you that a slimy pineapple? Coke? Casa Coca -Cola? banana. Coca -Cola. Casa banana. It's just really Coke delicious. Bro. It has like this beautiful bubble gummy flavor to it. These are soft. Yeah, you found the gum gum. Look at this. This is crazy. You peel it off like that, and then it's just all pure butter. Mashed potatoes with lemon juice and oil. So nice. What? Mashed potatoes. Nigga just started saying stuff. But in my <laughs> water, mashed potatoes, and butter all in one. So nice. So a yummy. Nice, a nice fruit. Okay. Um but so But you want I to say, be a potato. I say that to say prop my hot take of the week. There's only like three good fruits. Same with vegetables. It's like three dog. Um bananas, strawberries, um, pineapples. We can we can have room for a little bit of apple, like one grapes. Y'all fuck with grapes. Grapes are cool. But oh, you fuck oh, with raisins. Right, let me say this. Let me say this. Let me say this. 
And by three, I'm, I'm, I'm being hyperbolic. There's probably like five. I'll give grapes a pass. I'll give blueberries a pass. Um, probably going to stop it right there. For real, no for real. Oranges? Um, nah, uh, no oranges? No. No. No celery? Uh, as far as as far That's as broccoli to me, I ain't gonna lie. No, uh, well, yeah, he said fruits and vegetables. Oh, because he, he started. Well, yeah, yeah. No, I'm just not. I'm not. No, C- celery also is just terrible. I fuck with spinach. Spinach is cool. Fuck fuck spinach is vegetables. Spinach. But that's my hot take of the week, man. It's just not too many vegetables out here. It's not too many fruits. I'm a fruit and vegetable casual. Uh, bananas, strawberries, pineapples, and then give me a Brussels sprout. Uh, spinach, broccoli, yeah, Brussels sprouts. Oh, mango. No, not too much on Brussels sprouts. That's it. That's it right there. Cut it out. No mango. None of that. Just yeah, I'm gonna make sugar cane. Mango. Shut you from the field. Mango. Oh, my God. Sugar mango. 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 <laughs> oh, no guava is crazy. All right. Anyway. What's the avocado? Guava. <laughs> It's avocado. You don't like avocados, man? Sage, go ahead. No, avocados are enough for me. Man, um, I kind of thought of this one on the fly necessarily. Um, not gonna lie, I've after a couple of recent events in real life, and then even a conversation on here, I have decided that rather than mastering whatever craft in your professional skill or your profession, networking is always gonna be more valuable. The idea, the the ability to communicate with somebody, and um, the ability to get yourself create opportunities for yourself is always going to be more valuable than even just becoming the best or one of the best at whatever you do. Like mm-hmm. if I was a master podcaster versus a guy that knew a lot of other podcasters, I'd rather be the guy that knew other podcasters type shit. I wholeheartedly agree. I ain't gonna lie. A lot yeah. of reasons. Yeah. You're spinning. Yeah, maybe it was cold because I didn't think everybody would agree. I thought someone would be like, oh, what about doctor? But I guess, I, I don't know. Maybe. No, I'd rather. I'd been, and I was going to say, I was going to be 10 toes. I'd rather be a, a guy doctor. I'll probably find something hotter. I didn't think everyone agree with that. So, All right. V right. Souls. Bobby V. Shit, after tonight's game, this is definitely a hot take. I still believe in my guy. Okay. Woo! I still believe in my guy, my cup, my blanket, Jason Tatum, ladies and gentlemen. All right? I know he has a lot to prove. He has everything to prove. But I have whole confidence that he will prove it by the time it's April. Okay? These are regular season games. He's getting out the virus in his system out right now. Her two choke. Her two choke. By the time we're in the playoffs, we're going to be locked in. Yes, sir. That's my hot take. And the only thing I can say to any pushback to that is, I bet. That's all I can do at this point. Fuck it. I bet. It is what it is. Mm. Please, Damo. Please save us. Please save us. I'll take it. Right. I don't know if I'm going to save us, but <clears throat> um, listen, man. I'm, and I'm sharing my screen just so you have frame of reference. Look. Put it on the timeline. Listen. Good times. I said it before, and the the notion has been out there. We all know. Different title, different reaction. I get it. We all want to play the oh ignorant black folk trope is crazy. Oh, why would we push an ignorant show like this? Let's be honest. If this shit was titled the PJs, everything would be fine. If this was titled anything else other than fucking good times, you niggas would not be mad. People are upset. You would have thought that Sexy Red wasn't one of the hottest female rappers. The way niggas is talking about how ignorant this is. Niggas pulling out the Riley, the uh, Huey memes. I'm scared to keep scrolling because OnlyFans people really be posting wherever. Um, this is genuinely. the best good time. News and profile. <laughs> this is a real good time right here. <laughs> Like I, genuinely, it, it, that's my hot take. This show, like I, I'm, I, me personally, I'm watch a couple episodes. I'm gonna see what it's about because I'm not. I, I like stupid little shows, and this is just another stupid little show. Uh, it has a lot of people that I fuck with, voice acting in it. It seemed like it might have some funny shit. I'm gonna give it a shot. So everyone ready to throw pitchforks? You niggas are just looking for something to be mad at. This is the thing to be mad at for the week for you. Next week is gonna be something else. 
I disagree. Uh, I vehemently disagree. Um, I've talked about it before. The on the nose st- content is terrible. This is very much on the nose. There's nothing subtle about, you know, some of the things that go on. Um, they don't do these things in a tasteful way. I talked about edgy jokes and, you know, all that type of comedy. It's cool when it's, you know, dressed up better. You can tell cringy or edgy jokes or whatever the case may be when they're dressed up better. But when you go in there, ah, he's gay. Like, that's not a, there's no joke in that. It's nothing funny about that. It's terrible. I saw that. Steph Curry, it makes sense that you have a white mother. You know, I get it now. Oh, well, I wasn't going to say that about him. Uh, but I, I was I was just say this. Um, in terms of the cartoon itself and uh, Damo's specific take, we had this conversation offline as well. I don't know if it worked where me and him disagree. Isn't isn't the idea that, you know, if it wasn't named Good Times, people would hate it less. I do think it would get less hate. But zero... I say, yo, it's kind of that conversation of would a show even like potentially a good times be wanted in 2024. So I think anything that's going to stereotype um, black people, um, as far as a trailer is concerned, is always going to miss because they don't get to see the full vision, the full message. So at the time, they just seeing niggas do goofy shit in a stereotypical way. Oh, the boo. What the fuck? Dunk. So. That's really my th- my thing on it. I don't. I'm questioning more so. Could a show like this even exist in 2024? And it didn't. And while Good Times is very iconic for a generation before ours, and maybe even this generation, our generation, it's definitely not like how the Boondocks is for the Twitter generation. So if it was like a Boondocks retelling, obviously Boondocks is a cartoon itself. But if it was like a Boondocks reanimation or something like that, I feel like they could let that slide per se. But in general, um, I just don't think a cartoon like this would really just work in general. But let me, but let me also say too. Again, it, to me, it's more so about it being so on the nose. Yeah. Um, because a movie comparison, it's kind of loose. The American Society of Magical Negroes just came out, and it was terrible. It came out to terrible reviews, terrible box office. Um, nobody liked it, but on the contrast of that, American Fiction came out last year, critically acclaimed, loved by a lot of people, a lot of movie buffs, all that stuff, thought it was genius. And it's about how both of them dressed up their different black uh, aimed messages. So again, why Boondocks could exist is because, in theory, Boondocks would dress it up better. This just this this was so on the nose. It was cr- it was the whole let me taste your feet or whatever your feet look like. There was a lot of stuff in that trailer that was just terrible. Yeah, I, um, I'll go oh, ahead. Go ahead. No, no, I, I'll, I'll, I would just ask. I would just ask. Do you feel like a show like the PJs would be able to fly today? Yes, it was dressed up yeah. much better. I, I recently I don't watched. Think it was up, I don't think it was dressed up much better. I, re- I recently watched the PJs. It's definitely dressed up much better, and it talks about some uh, more serious themes. Now, mind you, I don't. I haven't seen that show, so they could talk about more serious themes or whatever. But they talk about serious things. But it, again, it is dressed up much better, and it's less on the nose than that. If your trailer is so on the nose like that, I can only imagine what your show is going to look at. That was terrible. Okay, someone in the chat, Zaydog, that is a good... that's why it's canceled. Legend of Chamber Lights? And that's why it's canceled. It was two on the nose? Okay. I don't know any of these shows. And I, I watched, I, I, I watched Josiah's show. Yeah, I watched Chat, all of Legends of Chamberlain Heights. Chat, and maybe if you guys have any shows right now, because I cannot think of the show I wanted to, have, uh, wanted to use that example, but there's some shows that um, go with the stereo stereotypes of black people, but they have very solid messages to them or songs that go very stip- very stereotypical, but they have message behind it. And as a result, people accept these uh, things. Hell, someone in chat just mentioned it, and it's not necessarily related to the black community necessarily, but there's a lot of times where so- actually even to the black community, South Park is one of those things that as raunchy and um, over the top South Park can be. There's certain times and certain episodes, uh, case in point, the N word guy, the N word episode, where it, in Domino's, I'm talking about funny as funny as hell episode, but nobody booed it, even though, like, you would think, oh my God, they have Randy Marshall's dropping the N word, all these white dudes dropping N word, because when you watch the episode, you understood what it was about and things like that. Now, if a trailer for it dropped, do I think it would? Uh, 
shit. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if I don't know if it's a trailer, depending on the clips they use, would work. But um, that's gonna be my only saving grace for this trailer. But based on what we've seen, yeah, it is. Um, it is. Ooh. I was an early adopter of Legends of Chamberlain Heights. Hey, I got the follow back, or I didn't even get the follow back. They follow me. So I was tweeting about the show early. It would not last today. That's why I canceled. That's why I got canceled. So mm. just trash. Let me read a couple of these super, not super chats, but let me read a couple of these um, hot take takes from the Discord, and then we'll get to some of the, take two, we'll take two of the people. I see Ken 10 down there. Um, this is Step On You says, there should be community centers that are designed to college or that are designed similar to college with no classes for 18 to 22 year olds that want to get out of their parents' houses and or orphanage and transition into adult life. Ain't that just college? Am I tripping? Nah, yeah, but not college. Co- college for younger people. You a homeless shelter for homeless niggas? What are we talking about? College for I thought you said 18 to 22. I mean, I'm never going to say practicality because, you know, America has a shit ton of money. Um, I mean, in turn, are you basically implying there should be free education and housing? And then, I mean, sure. I don't think he's saying a place for education at all. Take education away from it. He's saying a place where when you're between the ages of 18 to 22, it's uh-huh. a it's a place where people can go to get out their parents' house. And Omar, I thought you said, I, I thought he did say rec center, but the way he's making it seem is them niggas stay there as well. So now this isn't just a rec center. This is a a foster home, a a halfway, halfway house. I don't know what you would call it. Uh, Airbnb. A quarter way (laughs) house. Um, (laughs) Dark Bandit, friend of the show, some black classic movies aren't classics. I Uh, mean, uh, no shit at some point. Yeah, some. Extremely vague. That's why you say black classic movies aren't classics. Duh, nigga, that's why you call them black classics. Yeah, but but if you had named specific ones, for sure, we might have a conversation. JC says food condiments are overrated. No, they're not. Oh, hey, nigga, he's a serial killer. Eastern foods without no, condiments. No, no. He's a serial killer. This nigga's eating plain that everything. Nigga, that nigga says plain, glizzy, plain, is plain no, no, burnt. No, like, fuck, fuck, fuck that. Fuck, fuck ketchup, ranch, all that shit. No salt, no pepper. Get out of my face. GG's. Like, what are we, what are we doing? Is salt pepper right? condiment, though? Yeah, that yeah. Is- I think yeah. they follow that. <laughs> I guess, I guess, I guess, yeah, 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 that brother is not. Chick fil A with no sauce, bro. Like, just straight sandwich. Chick fil A with no sauce. I ain't gonna lie. I, like, as as the door dasher of the pod, yo, I might uh, be. I'm about to say, let's not t- let's not whip out the, hey. the door dash track. Uh, hey, hold on. <laughs> Wait, hold on. Hey, hold on. <laughs> I'm not trying to do that. Y'all not trying to do that. But uh, look, man. Trying to do that. we can do it right now. Oh, we'll, go, we'll go dash for dash one day. What I say for certain. Ah, the point is, the point, is right now. the point is, <laughs> man, I'm telling you, meals are ruined. I have gotten in my car to go back and be like, you know what? I'm going to go get some sauce. Like, this, I, can't, I don't want it. I don't want it playing. You're drunk, buddy. Yeah, I, 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 he's not cooking. Um, last one from Discord. Andrew Sullivan says people are bigger fans of producers than the rappers they listen to. They don't even know it. Nah. I hear you though. I do hear you. I still disagree, but that's not a bad take. Wait, what was it? it? Producers people are bigger are than bigger, rappers? Yeah, people are bigger fans producer of the producer than the rappers. It's on the artist than the actual artist himself. To a certain point, to a certain extent, I do agree. Yeah, I yeah, I get the take. This is probably the one take of the day that hasn't been bad i just disagree i do think that sonically nick it's gonna sound mo but some people fall in love with uh voices uh flows all that kind of stuff and while yes you get obsessed with the beat uh, at the end of the day gonna it, gonna and little baby could be on the same beat and one person no matter what was said will say little baby out rap them or gonna out rap them because they just like the other nigga voice people stand the personalities too in a yeah, way, that's so. a the same beat is Crazy. I'm just. I'm just real quick. Yo, Rose, how much does it say you saved in DoorDash fees? Just, just no, that alone. Yeah, I'm gonna say it's like DoorDash for Dash right now. I don't know. I, no, just how much? How much have you saved in fees? That's it. That's all I need to see. How much have I saved in fees? Yes. If you go to, if you go to your account, go to manage uh, Dash Pass. 
You saved uh, blank amount in fees. How much did I save for y'all? I'm not reading that. I'm not reading Ooh, that. I'm not sorry. reading that. Not um, reading all right, all right. Hold on, hold on, hold on. This is about to be some big back activities. Listen, listen, listen. I'm not reading that. I'm not reading that. I didn't even know it was that much. Hey, nah, so I'm looking at my boy. Whoa, I got a problem. Hey, hey, screenshot for the core four. I'm going to do mine. Screenshot for the core four. Wait, how do you access it? How do you access it? You go to your account, you go to manage dashboard. This is bad. Oh, oh, yeah, we all got dash pass. Oh, real dash is in the building. Real dash. I drop mines. I drop mines. I drop mines. I drop mines. Oh, okay. That makes you feel a little better. Okay, so I'm gonna want the band for band with me. Oh yeah, no, 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 rookie numbers, man, rookie numbers. Wait, what? Rookie numbers? These are rookie, rookie numbers. Oh, I told God. you to go dash for dash with me, bro. Wait, so drop yours, drop yours, drop yours. <laughs> bro, bro. <laughs> right, Omar, oh, face when he sees the numbers. So send yours, bro, bro. I, I'm, so I'm send his, so send his, so send his. This is extreme out. big back activities, <laughs> Three to ten dollars oh every time. Yeah, I'm gonna zoom in. On I think this, this is a this here. is a lifetime thing, though. I think I will. I will take my I will yeah, take right. my L and this is a month. If this is a month, nigga. I'll go vegan right now. I swear to God. <laughs> I'll take my L because um yeah, I have a problem. I'm doing that. Oh my God. Yo. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. He won. He won the band for band. Oh he, won the, he won. He won the dash for dash. Oh my God, bro. He got more than me and Damo combined. <laughs> 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 Everyone got Not their vices. I know yours, but oh, it's fucking too hard. Can you see how long it. you've been a part of Dash Pass? Uh-uh. I don't know. No. No. You can. You can see enrolled win. You can see enrolled. Hold on, hold on, bro. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. It's like V-Souls. No, it's crazy, bro. I canceled my shit in February. Two day, like, they were like, okay, it's going to expire at the end of the month. By the end of the month. Oh, uh, no, so this back is home. crazy. No, no, my shit's safe for 2022. Your shit is from fucking 20. That's two months. Oh, that is crazy. Yours is more. Yours is crazy. Yours is more Yours is than mine. Like, yeah. mine's at least 2019. Y'all must be sage is longer than mine, so we've been sages. That's insane. Oh, oh, so I'm out of one? You might have yeah, I'll say this because we'll this never is, know because we'll never know how how much I really was door dashing in 2019, 2020, 2021. For sure. We'll never know. But I'm not gonna lie, you're on pace, buddy. You're, you're on you're pace. On, <laughs> yo, you're per 36, nigga. Yo, per hundred dashes. Oh my god. Hey, to be fair, to be fair, when no, I dash, we don't say for two people. I already know it's it. for two don't people. It's for two people, bro. My shit is for two people. 2022 and 2022 was for two people for a bit, and 2024 and 2023. Yeah, it's definitely been two people. So I will say, mine's is a little but inflated. My, but my still, like nah, 24, nah, bro. Nah, nah, nah. Even nah, if that is two people, right. y'all niggas be like about 1.75, bro. Right? Y'all order half the menu every time y'all go out on DoorDash. That's crazy. Yo, so relax, 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 bro. Relax. And this is just the savings. What? Hey, the CK said, say best, man. You can use it as sad nigga logic or just the truth, man. I'm the only one. I'm the only one. Oh, 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 shit. Oh, shit. Oh, what's that? What the hell? That's the hell? Kenneth, was that you? Yeah, probably. Uh, my uh, girl uh, called me. My girl called me. My fault. Ken, uh, Ken, how you doing today? I'm doing good. So Sage and Damo. <laughs> yeah, it was good that going on. <laughs> oh man, oh, how, he's can, hot. how can how can we help you, my brother? You can't help me, little bro. Oh shit! I got something <laughs> to tell you. I got something <laughs> to tell you though. Okay, Jimmy. Souls, you appreciate the stats back in the day. Let's talk about some statistics right now between okay. Paige Beckers and Caitlin Clark. Okay. All right. W press. All right. All right. Forty-five percent from the field overall. Mm. We, we're not. We don't even got to talk about true shooting. If we get if we get into the advanced analytics, it's gonna get real nasty in here. Okay. All right. So first, we can off, though. We can get nasty though. <sighs> no diddy. No diddy. Paige Beckers. Hey, chill, chill. Paige Beckers, fifty-four percent from the field. She is a she is a point guard 
coach, oh my, the coach for UConn, Darvin Scam. They play her at power forward, small forward, for 48% of the game. And she's shooting 54% from the field, 44%. Put the blow gasket. <laughs> Calm down, buddy. Calm down. It's, it's crashing out on camera. <laughs> All right, Omar. Mm-hmm. You hear me? You hear me? Yeah, I'm here. Kaitlyn Clark is chucking over there in Iowa. Mm. They don't got nothing going on over there. All they got is cornbread and wheat fields out there. <laughs> they don't know they're supposed to be running the system. they just giving her the damn ball. And that's why when they play Duke this Saturday, buddy, I want you to watch. And you're going to learn about Paige. All right? And, and when Paige, oh, I, I want Caitlin to get there. Because when Paige matches up with her, she's going to make that woman turn around. She's going to get a nice 18 foot long whip. And she's going to do something devious to her. It's going to be nasty and it's going to get treacherous. It's going to get bad and it's going to get ugly. And ain't nobody going to like it. And that's what Paige said. And isn't now we, we turn the page and let you read. Isn't isn't <laughs> yeah, that was so disgusting? I end my turn, that ass. Disgusting. <laughs> that oh, that man, KO, now we turn oh, the page KO, and let you oh, read. It's crazy. crazy. <laughs> Dude, popcorn reading, bro. <laughs> this nigga just got a paragraph over. Promo, bro. That was fantastic. I ain't um, gonna lie. Omar, how it, will you respond? Isn't Duke the worst team remaining in the in the tournament still? You got to play who in front of you. They gonna swoop them. Yeah, swoop I, them. yeah, no, no, no. And I get that. I'm just I'm pointing that out. I think Duke is the worst team remaining in the um in the tournament. Uh, wouldn't you shoot a better percentage if you played in the power forward position? She gets a lot of shots in the middle of that zone when teams zone up on you, right? She gets a, she gets a lot of shots in that middle, right? Uh, that's fair. That's fair. But uh, we can talk ball now. Uh, she's actually a, amazing off of the pick and roll. Her screen navigation is elite. Watch her as soon as she turns off the corner off the pick and roll. She has a great pop game. Shoot the three. Now, 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 Sage is about to say she's at the power uh-huh. four, small four, so she's going to be the one popping. But they play her combo also. They start her at the guards sometimes, and they start her at the four sometimes. That's totally fair, but that doesn't negate what I said. When they run that offense, especially when teams zone up on her, isn't she in that middle of that zone and getting a lot of mid-range jumpers? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's just basketball. We know that. You know, to beat the zone, you no, get to no, the middle. I, I, yeah, I get that. I get that. But wouldn't that explain a good portion as to why her field goal percentage is high? You got to make your shots. Hey, you can't you can't penalize people for making your shots. You got to make your free I'm not, throws. You I'm, don't... Not, I'm not penalizing anybody for anything I'm putting into context. Oh, yeah, so yeah. Okay, context. Here, you, try to, you try to spout these stats, especially for people who don't watch – a lot of the game, and I wish there was a place where I, I could. I find do watch the game. My fault. No, I not you. Game. I mean other people. When yeah. I wish there was a place where I could find the shot chart for real, for real. But if she gets a lot of shots in different spots that are closer to the basket, I would assume that her field goal percentage would be higher. You know, <laughs> a center would have a higher field goal percentage than a guard, right? That just makes sense. But what I'm saying is, there's a there's a demon in in those cornfields. You understand what I'm saying? Five million dollar woman. Okay, mm. somebody that you honestly don't want to see even on your best day. Now, I get it. Jeepers it's creepers. easier It's easier when you surround yourself with the talent that UConn has, with the coaching that UConn has, with the pedigree that UConn has, because I think they have how many McDonald's All-Americans on these teams? She's played with a couple of other. Last year she played with a uh, – well, she was probably hurt because she's – Frail as ever. She's always played with uh, future WNBA players, right? Paige has always played with future yeah. WNBA players, even going back to her freshman year. And she plays with some current ones now that'll be in the WNBA. Look, I'm not saying anything bad about Paige. She's a cool kid. One of the good guys. Kaylin is just different. Okay, okay. I- I'll break it down. For the people who don't really know Paige for real and her, her GOAT status... She was better than Caitlin Clark two ACL tears ago. Right now, she's just on her level. So when people like Omar make these rambunctious claims about Caitlin Clark doing things like this to Paige Beckers, okay, you got to take it with a grain of salt, and you got to realize that this is the new school. You know, when you, when you hear the kids talking about, oh, Paul George is the GOAT, top 10. But when you hear people saying crazy shit like that, 
you know, mm-hmm. you, you you take it with a grain. So you go, oh, okay, you just you're just seeing the 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 killer game she did against Michigan. Fuck her, because I go to MSU. I'll fuck her, by the way. No, okay. Let's fuck Caitlin Clark okay. forever, honestly. Just okay. off of that alone, fuck her. I do All think right? it's important to assess, you know, a person's biases. Do you um do you find Miss Miss Becker's attractive? Oh, she bad. Okay. There you go. There, there you go. What are we talking about? Do you there find Miss Miss Clark peace. attractive? There, there you go. There it is. There it is. There it is. There it is, mate. Wait, uh, Haley? You fuck with Haley? Wow. Ooh, that's crazy. L milk man, man. man. Objectively, e- hey, even even Omar. Objectively, <laughs> Omar said that one. But <laughs> oh wait, is that is that is that a Stanford girl? <laughs> <laughs> she was starting a little bit too. <laughs> No, no, no. Haley's from LSU, man. Now nah, I'm curious. The 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 um, yeah. <laughs> Not <laughs> after you. <laughs> <laughs> what was the milk man for a cool 20 <laughs> seconds, Chad? <laughs> I just said anything. I, I, you know, Hi, bro. Okay, bro. You know, I know you and Dre and Cruz are in there. So I'm like, okay, let me send some milk every once in a while. I might send Chloe kits in there just to keep y'all entertained. I'm not selfish. I'm for the people. Um, yeah, it's cool. I just, I mean, I haven't heard anything other than she's more efficient because she plays on a better team, but it's okay. It's okay. I understand what it was like to be a Michael Jordan fan back in the 90s now because I am a fan of Caitlin Clark and hearing all the opposition for somebody who's just clearly better. She just plays on a bad team, man. They're a worse team than a lot of these other people. You had it right, but you're talking about Joe Dumars right now. Oh, you're the. Du- you think Paige is the? I don't. I don't yes, I don't she's know. like clearly better. You and you like, still haven't said. You really haven't said anything that makes you say that she's clearly better. Like you, that's that's the thing about y'all in these conversations. And I don't want to drag this pot for too long, but you've literally not said anything. She has better off ball skills. She's better on pick and roll. She's better uh, cutting to the rim. She's yes. No, slow down, slow down. Don't rattle things off. She has okay, better off ball skills. She's way better off ball. Right, cool. That's fine. Um, is the offense in Iowa predicated for Kaitlyn Clark to even have the ability to show that she's good off ball? Y'all say no, that but you, you asked me to say what I saw that she did in her game. I have to. Okay, accept that's what fine. I, so then I would then I would argue that Kaitlyn Clark is better on ball. Uh, I would argue against that from the tape that she has when she played on ball before. The surgeries. I mean, before yeah, the injury, she, had she, two, had. she had two ACL tears. So we're not talking about the past. You can't untear ACLs, right? So she tore two ACLs. Current day on ball, Caitlin Clark is better. Could you put the reverse card on Paige? Like with her role, she's not in the same situation that Caitlin is, where she I can did, control yeah. the. Yeah, this is this is just us raising to raise at that point. To be honest with you, I don't like to play that game. That's a stupid game. But yeah, yeah. but uh, but but also just the the last point I'm gonna make because I ain't gonna draw this point out no more. Uh, Paige Becker's like 5'11", and she, they're playing her at forward. So her, you saying that she's a big, so she's gonna be more efficient. It's it's like it's like if they played Dejounte Murray at power forward, and he was the same level of efficiency. It would be something to like be like, oh, okay. When LeBron plays, when LeBron plays at a different position, usually when people play at oh, a different, we position, on the right page. Paige Becker, LeBron. Are more, they stop. They are more efficient when they play in different roles. When you put more skilled players in different positions, they are more efficient that just makes like sense so when 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 you take uh, i don't know let's just say um give me a two guard anthony edwards and you shift him down to a three and a four who are probably going to be slower mobility wise and can't guard them laterally or whatever the case may be can't keep up with the quickness they tend to be more efficient that's just how basketball works so if you take this guard this 511 guard and slot her into the uh, four position, get her into certain spots in the zone, like I said, in the middle, the soft spot of the zone, where uh, a four who could shoot it would have a lot of success anyway. A guard who can shoot it generally better than a four would have a lot of success. And then when the big comes up in those zones, she would have the ability to take her off the dribble and score at the basket easier because she's quicker because she's a guard. It's not that hard. Again, I think Paige is a great player, and I'm showing too much ball knowledge. I'm supposed to be the most casual on this podcast. I think Paige is a great player. Caitlin is just it. She's the reason for the season, Twin. Well, agree to disagree at this point. Yeah, Appreciate but, you. Oh, Comment I'm, below who won the war. Get out of here, Ken. Oh, shit. Yeah, get him out of here. 
Ah, um, listen, man, we're gonna get out of here. Yeah, I just realized it was eleven o'clock. Holy shit! That's fine. Yeah, we can keep on. Fuck it. Um, say say goodbye to the people, man. All right, people. Uh, TSO verse. Not gonna lie, I was supposed to stream, but um, I don't know why. I just feel like shit today. I don't know what it is. I streamed early this morning though, so if I stream at five a.m. again, <laughs> that was a fun stream. Um, you guys went the fuck crazy. Appreciate the 5 a.m. crew. Wanted to shout you guys out personally. Think you guys had like 90 gifted when it was all said and done. It was only like 60 of you. It was off the fucking change. I don't even know how, how that happens, but you niggas are amazing. Thank you so much. Uh, that was a special stream. The re and A, hey, for those in the Keep It A Buck verse, I'm going to promote my channel by saying this, man. The Shibuya arc is upon us. We have entered Shibuya with... The guy that has been in every fucking poll, Gojo, is here. We haven't entered it yet. We haven't started it yet, but we are starting the Shibuya Arc next stream. It's going to be fantastic, man. So, hey, we'll see you guys there. Likely to be tomorrow when I have much more free time, but I want to be able to watch that during the day so I can yell and scream because I ain't going to lie. Even the build up there, whoo, that shit was crazy. Okay. Peace out. He's heating up. Say goodbye to the people, man. Peace out, y'all. Appreciate y'all for coming through. Great, great pod. Great stream. Shout out to everyone that was on the playback again. If you missed it, um, we pulled some audibles in this podcast last stream. Watched some um, NBA games live. So if you haven't tuned in, go ahead and follow us on playback to catch the bitch live. All right. Um, great banger on SNS tomorrow featuring our, our, our friend over here. You know what I'm saying? That's coming out tomorrow. Um, yeah, man, appreciate y'all for coming through. That's it. Damo. All right, Chaz, me and my favorite midnight snack, and we will be back at some point. Listen, I know I said I was about to stream that one time, but see what happened was. <laughs> Not gonna lie, man, I got downstairs and turned to a dad, and I forgot. Not gonna hold you. Nick. I ain't gonna lie. Mick. Uh, it's Mickey, it's Mickey, it's Mickey, man, it's Mickey. I'm, I'm sorry. Been, been really enjoying the Family Man title, so that's really why I haven't streamed. But a stream will be coming soon. I need to justify my time grinding them up. So we'll be on stream. Uh, I might pull a sage. I might stream like three in the morning, four in the morning, five in the morning, just randomly. Keep the notice on. Hey, that shit was crazy. I'll do also. Uh, talk to souls about. It. We don't promote souls and sage on here enough, man. I'm telling you. A banger is on the way. I promise you. There, I've never been so confident in a video in a game-changing series on the channel. A banger is on the way. Stay tuned. Um, make sure you become an MVP. Make sure you join the Discord for all the shenanigans and nonsense and tomfoolery. Um, you know, subscribe to the playback, Noti Gang, all that stuff like that. Uh, I will be streaming this Saturday, the debate stream at 8 p.m., the one stream a month. I'm going to make it a big deal, a big event. So stay tuned for that. More videos coming pretty much daily at this point. Edited shouts out to the team over there. Uh, again, shouts out to Dre. Happy birthday. To uh, sure. Chicago's Pat Bev, man. The one that we need in the streets. The one that's going to take charge and initiative. Akron's LeBron. The little, our, our, the little pit bull of our group. <laughs> um, last but not least, uh, Paige plays in the weakest conference out of the most major conferences in women's college basketball. We'll see you next time. Bye, guys. Go see Kenny and them. Go watch Kenny and them right now. Go raid Kenny and them. Oh, they, shit. They're going to snitch on us, aren't they?